Well, here we go once again. Welcome to all watchers of the Legends of the Drowned Isles. We are trying to stream, but streaming doesn't seem to be working out. So these are available up on YouTube. Tell your friends if they're looking for it and they're concerned. Link will go in the Watchers group on Facebook. If you don't know what the Watchers group is on Facebook, how do we explain? Just go to Watchers on Facebook. It's just called Watchers. It's the simplest name I could think of. Mm -hmm. I'm betting they get a lot of Weight Watchers hits on that one. <laughs> That's curious. Um, I would maybe like rename it to like Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Maybe. Yeah, I didn't want the name, name to get too long. but uh, Drowned uh, Watchers. <laughs> this is, of course, a uh, home game of a D&D &D, uh, RPG tabletop. What do we want to call it? Uh... It's still weird to me because I stare at my players here and there's that invisible player hanging around, which is the one that's watching, but uh, welcome. Thank you for watching. This is in a homebrew setting of my own. I'm Mark Kilfoyle, otherwise known as the Encaffeinated One, the uh, fool to get all this stuff started. Uh, you may notice that things look a little bit different. They don't look a lot different, I think, from your side, but uh, we have uh, moved rooms. I've, uh, I've cannibalized my living room now after we were in the kitchen for a long time. Hopefully this uh, allows us to have uh, a bit better space. Um, fourth camera has been added because I'm addicted to buying more cameras, mm -hmm. apparently. That will come up in the map screen if we get to that uh, stage for doing any kind of map-based combat. But uh, again, this is a... Uh, I don't have the catchy tagline just yet. i got to work on that. And it's like We are a bunch of nerds playing D&D, &D, but that's kind of been used by somebody or other. Um, but uh, it is a homebrew game uh, set in the uh, 55 islands, uh, which uh, are separated not by water but by sand. Uh, the game has been progressing through a pseudo downtime where each of our players have been in different places catching up on the things that they have been wanting to do for a while. Some of it has been a little intense, some of it has been uh, narrated over. We'll see where we get to today. This episode is uh, on the 27th of May, in case you're wondering exactly when all this stuff is taking place. Named uh, End of Winter Part 3. There are a lot of other things that I wanted to name it, but uh, they probably weren't nearly as polite. We will try to be polite, but there will probably be language which will uh, offend young children, uh, stodgy grandmothers from the 50s, and uh, uh, occasional... It, it, it delight young children. Well... <laughs> It's supposed to offend young children. The young children don't seem to be get offended by it too much. It offends the parents of young children. Yeah, that's probably more the actual truth. I find it hilarious because I still remember being a kid and I know what it's really like. But we, we sort of have this fiction. Anyway, I won't, won't go off on that. I want to introduce my players, though. Uh, let's start around the table, starting from there. Uh, I'm Murray. Uh, I play Elzara, our Wood Elf Druid. And I am at Kimmy's Productions in the Twitch chat. So... Yeah. If Twitch is working, if then you Twitch can is check. working, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not. It just dropped out. Oh. It just dropped out. <laughs> For those of you watching on YouTube, you can also comment yep. there, and I suspect that streaming to YouTube is going to be our next step. Yeah. Continue around the table. Uh, hi, I'm Jody. I'm going to be playing Clark, the uh, fighting rogue. He's also a half orc, and he's in Vatour, taking care of business. I am Pat. I play Amrun Elisar, the. Uh, Social justice cleric who's currently trying to arrange for food to be shipped to Vitor and otherwise uh, being very flashy and outstanding in uh, a queen. That's my cat MJ. You can possibly <laughs> see her tail occasionally. <laughs> MJ makes her first camera appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and she's completely oblivious to it. Max. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Distracted by cat. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nax, and I play Zakis, half uh, half elf wizard, and he just got a new spell book, and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> so as we begin, also cat, <laughs> also cat, <laughs> on the island of Vatur, Vatudren, technically, uh, the city of Vatur in the middle of it, has also been the middle of an extended winter. Um, now, nearly six months have passed and winter showing no sign of breaking. Snows have fallen heavily, making roads nearly impassable. Food is becoming a crisis in many parts. The Druids have sent out their entire legion to help with 
uh, people across these islands. The cold extends all the way down to the island of Bendra, which is far higher, much less precipitation, but the deadly cold is, is causing people to not travel across it where they would travel normally, the port city of Aquain, where uh, boats bring in supplies from all across the, uh, the island. But, most recently, Zacchaeus sought the wisdom of Emeril Amakir, who made his return, but found himself telling the tale of what happened recently and setting up another rendezvous to return with Emeril's pipe. Amrun, Amrun uh, visited a hospital in Aquain and found a strange disease plaguing the commoners, and Dr. Alita's increasing fanaticism displayed in a mural in her treatment room. Elzara discovered the first of many loads, sorry, delivered the first of many loads of food from Padwich Glens to the hungry citizens of Atur, and spoke to a very concerned Ferendra about her mistress, council member Aglexia Ferendril, who has been missing for months. And <laughs> obviously I forgot, I didn't finish typing my notes because I wrote, Clark is taken into the Great Library, <laughs> which is only the beginning of that, uh, after confronting a changeling that took the form not only of uh, Peter Cantor, the assistant to uh, the council member, but also council member Alastair Woodcomb himself. And after that, you had, with, uh, with uh, Zacchaeus' help, gone to Bozo the Sage to try to get a little more information and figure out what's going on. Uh, let us begin in Aquain. As Amrun has done round to the hospital, raising spirits, and healing many people. But during your time there, one of the other people you had intended to talk to was Flamekeeper mm. Tyrell. But in fact, you found that she sought you out, word apparently having spread of your work at the li at the uh, at the hospital. Mm. Words are hard. Uh, the library hospital. The no library. Books. No, it's, they have no books. There are no books. They've all been burned. Mm -hmm. No. Um, and you do see a, a somewhat concerned but friendly flamekeeper Tyrell waiting for you outside the hospital. Um, yeah. Oh. Actually, one thing that uh, I realized afterwards, because I forgot some of what my character does, uh, was when he was healing, he had basically left so the minor injuries just to be handled by the doctors. But uh, in, in place of some of his spells, he would have used that ability to shift health around okay. and just taken from himself and given to others. All right. So he'd look a bit more haggard coming out. Further no. demonstrating, however, to the people inside the the strength mm -hmm. of your connection to Paluxia. Yeah, it's very showy too, because the my my life basically goes out as tendrils of ghostly water and touches people and they feel better. Um, uh, and in particular, I keep uh, a my highest level spell slot unused because uh, I'm going to need that in a bit. Um, and yes, I walk on to um, uh, Flamekeeper. Uh, my apologies for uh, uh, not responding to you earlier. Uh, I understand you've been, been rather busy, Amrun. Yes. And as we are now colleagues, I suppose, feel free to call me Zora. Uh, thank you, Zora. Do you mind if we go for a walk? I'd like to talk sure. to you, if you don't mind. First of all, you look a little, a little haggard. Um, are you all right? Oh yes, I'll be fine uh, later. Some of my abilities uh, take it out of me a bit, but I should be fine. That's something I'm familiar with. Um, do you need assistance? I can offer you a little. Healing is not the forte of the Igneans, I'm afraid, but. Um, a little bit would not be uh, unwarranted, but uh, uh, if you yeah. Will, if you will take my hand, he'll take her hand. Okay, and you see her calm and uh, uh, face uh, sort of go placid, um, and you can feel her hand warming up dramatically as you see a sort of uh, lick of flame flow down from the sides of her face roll down across her arms and then extend over yours. It doesn't burn, 
but the cold of the day seems to flow away for mm. a moment, uh, and you uh, do recover. Uh, we're not tracking particular, yeah. but you would recover essentially eight hit points in that particular point. Nice. I notice this chair is now going to make noise. Let's see how that works. Yeah. Uh, it's not much, but I can offer that at least. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, that is more than uh, enough. Uh, there are others who would see this as, um, if not a treasonous act, then at least one that's not necessarily in keeping with Ignean teachings. But that's part of what I'd like to talk to you about. Mm. Yes, I... Uh, I've run across information that suggests that our, well, your group and other groups that were affiliated with Polexia see things drastically differently, uh, certain historical events and such. The prelate has uh, told me some of what's in our historical records, and I remember uh, she recalled that your wizard friend, Zacchaeus, I think, yes. had discussed some comparative theology or comparative history. Interesting. Um, it got us to look a little deeper at some of the history records, and we've also heard a little bit from the Grand Chapel uh, of Ignis, oh. the <coughs> central <coughs> point of our religious studies. Where is that? Um, if I may ask, I mean... I, I, it's like on an island far away from here, mm. surrounded by, uh, surrounding rather, um, one of the last living volcanoes. Hmm. Interesting. You know, it's rather significance to us, as you might imagine. Oh, uh, yes, I would imagine so. Um, but I'm, I'm here not just to talk about history, but about the present as much. Yes. Um, and if I may... I'll be speaking frankly, as friends. I think that oh. we qualify as that. Yes. Despite whatever religious leanings we both have. I like you. Our time traveling together showed me that you have something in you, and you've overcome the darkness which threatened to consume your soul, too. At least it yes. seems that way, from your acts as well. He has been defeated, although possibly not destroyed, uh, as with... Many things, I suspect that he will eventually be back. Intruders but. upon our world sometimes cannot be completely defeated upon our plane. Mm. It's what I've heard, anyway. I have not ventured to other planes of existence, although we do have some study given to us when we become flame keepers. I looked at one, but we didn't go there. It looked like a nasty place. From what I've heard, most of them are, perhaps all of them, too. Mm. But the concern that has been raised to me, based on some of the stories that have filtered through mm. and some of the comments from the Grand Chapel, is that your followers may be getting out of hand. I... And by this I point, she's led you kind of away from yeah. the hospital itself, and you can see the frozen canals underneath as it crosses over a bridge. I only have seven that I know of, and six of those I just met recently. Are you talking about Dr. Alita? Uh, she's the most prominent example, perhaps, here. But there are others who have spoken of your impact. There will be those who come to you with less than less than healthy motivations. Oh, yes. They will see you as a source of power, to be controlled or manipulated as they see fit, or at least to be abused in ways you may not realize. Mm, I have met some who would like that, I believe. It's, it is because we have had a friendship that I hope to continue to have, that I will try to give you some advice. I would Again, appreciate it. I have it. been counseled against this, because there is a, a certain core... antipathy or, or even rivalry, which is seen, perhaps.
hat. And this may yes. be some of the lo long ago lingering concerns. There have been numerous times when we have faced off against those who have claimed to have spoken for the gods. Mm. In all cases, it was shown to be nothing more than a mouthpiece for something much darker and sinister than that. None have used the name of Poluxia before. That seems to be something new and I think uh, notable. But there have been others that have had different names throughout the hundreds of years our, our group has been facing off against them. I understand. I believe that there are issues from the past which may take a great deal of work to resolve. Um, the sisters, for instance, who served Paluxia at the time when Well, I guess the war happened. Uh, the whatever historians call it, I'm not quite sure. Um, um, I believe that in our books it's referred to as the Great Purge. That sounds appropriate. Um, I know it. In my experiences, I have met the Avatar of Thylestra. She seems likely to hold a grudge, but may be open to learning a new way. This is the Avatar long dead? Uh, the Avatar reborn, perhaps? She looks quite surprised at that, because it's clearly something she did not really know. Um, she is the only one of them that I have met. It's possible she's not who she says she is, but it seems to be the truth. Um, Do you answer to her, or does she answer to you? Neither. Hmm. Uh, to be honest, I don't know who I answer to. That was another one of my questions. There have been a lot of inquiries that I have not been able to answer concerning your your organization, to put it bluntly. Well, I have no organization as of yet, although it appears I may be beginning one. Um, I would suggest that you take the steps very carefully and very specifically. Mm. If, from what I have heard already, there are those who are broadly interpreting the things that you've done, the things that they think you've done, the things that are only rumors, and mm -hmm. are turning those benevolently or malevolently towards ends you may not like. Well, yeah. The Igneans long ago developed a structure to make ourselves more accountable, both to ourselves and to Ignis himself, as well as to the public that we serve. That was not uh, easy. There are stories now somewhat untold to the newer members of the church, but there are stories of our early days mm. where we were wild, where we, like fire, spread rapidly but with little direction, taking on whatever we saw as the slights of the day. Yes. Your... Does your organization have factions? Separate schools of thought? Officially, no. Unofficially. There are scholars who debate these things. There are people in the field who perhaps interpret a little more loosely or a little more uh, benevolently some of the interpretations, myself included. This is uh, an outreach not intentionally sponsored by the church, but yes, it is a because I know you a bit better, they've given me some leeway. Yeah. As I understand it, from what little I know, the Palexia's organization a thousand years ago 
the sisters were empowered by her but they each followed their own methods of enacting what they believed to be her will. As our histories tell us, they each were corrupted in unique ways. I believe corrupted is probably an apt term, not perhaps, uh, for want of a better word, interdimensional corruption but political or spiritual corruption. Uh, I believe they each, well, again, for want of a better term, became full of themselves. They did not agree with each other, uh, did things separately, uh, which may be why they were able to be wiped out as they were not of one mind. And in this, as I, I said, I believe Thylestra, in my talks with her, may be coming around to less combative ideas, but there are others um, who may be different. Um, you think the others are also reincarnated? I think it's possible. I, in talks with someone, uh, they suggested that this winter was due to the return of the sisters. It is a most unnatural winter. Yes. Um, and in our early adventures, a guardsman that we worked with, a man named Dartan, had gone missing in the waters under Vator. Uh, we thought him lost and were unable to go after him ourselves. I made contact with him with a spell um, several months ago. His only words were that he now served the green goddess and then he refused to communicate with me any further. I see. The green goddess may fit the description of one of the sisters. It may also be another one of the interlopers, the ones that our group has fought for centuries. That, is, that as well. But if the sisters are coming back, they may still be split in their methods. Some may be good, some may not be good. I. I only have the experience with one. Um, Tell me, do you think that Thylestra, you said, is the one that you have spoken yes. with, does she serve Paluxia, or is she still her own being? I believe she's her own being. She does not seem... She does not seem to be able to communicate with Paluxia, something which... I have know you, it disturbs her. Have you heard the voice of your goddess? I have contacted or attempted to contact Palexia several times. Only once with a, with a, a communion where I was able to at least get an indication. But even then, I don't believe it was... Uh, I did not hear a voice in particular. I saw things that gave an indication of positive or negative. Um, I believe I am serving Paluxia. To me, it may not well, I mean, from a certain angle, the source of the power is, some, uh, it is something important, but not as important to me as what I can do to help with it. I see. But I do not feel... I've been connected to a number 
of things over the past year. Some of which I've seen, at least the, the result. Yes. I do not feel that corruption or misalignment that I felt with Susero. And I do not feel the neutral detachment of Modron. This feels more like a... She frowns a little bit at the mention of Modron, by the way. I'll let it pass, because I only get so much time. Uh, <laughs> um, this feels more like a, a positive energy, if you will. Um, and I, when I contacted Polexia and asked am I doing what uh, is what I am doing what you want me to do the answer was positive so I believe that she is at the very least okay with me helping people um, I wish we'll I probably knew more, come to more than that I'm afraid oh yes um, we have already dealt with a couple of attempts by interlopers, as you would call them. I suspect there will be more. Um, there will be. We have had reports, not detailed, but there are many Ignians across the islands. Mm. And there are things that people are describing as they have seen never before. Creatures and forces they cannot explain. Yes. We suspect to some degree the war currently raging in the north among the orcs who, yes, have perhaps a more primitive system of belief, but are otherwise not only driven by war. The mm -hmm. hobgoblins who are honorable in their own way while they have fought before there is a sense that this conflict is not of that same nature no I think there are a lot of things coming together at once it suggests a breadth of power and a strength of power uh, there have been I've heard of attacks in Vatur uh, from shadowed creatures um, trying to think if any what the other ones I would have heard of were I don't remember but um, oh I think there had been uh, kobolds in the sewers we had encountered them before with dealing with the cult of Arvax um, Arvax? yes uh, some demon who was I believe attempting to fill the void that had been left by Poluxia. Sosero or his master were attempting the same. There are many stories, legends, some of them technically called historical accounts, but mostly the, the tales of whoever happen to have the proper pen and the proper paper and the proper ear at the time of of the days before mm. of the war of the purge there are senses that the prelate has been able to help me understand of the way the words are written it is I will admit language which is not comfortable to me mm -hmm. poetry of a sort but with hidden meaning and and distracting description, attempting to mask the dark times mm. that we faced. But there is a sense that the culmination of the events which killed, I suppose, eliminated, moved Poluxia away from mm. this earthly plane, that it was her doing that these interlopers were able to come through that she somehow had served as their passageway I have 
in one of the temples of Paluxia that I was at, they had a hallway, a long hallway, with a, a painted history along each side. One side matched what you have said and what Zacchaeus uh, had heard from Oh, nuts. I don't remember the name now. The prelate? Oh, the prelate, yes. Um, the other, however, painted not the opposite picture, but a different picture. I can't remember the details of that picture, <laughs> but if I remember correctly, um, Palexia was not responsible for bringing them in. She may have been in some way tricked or affected or something like that, but she was not from elsewhere. She was from here. That according to this history, there were two founding gods. Hmm. Ignis of the fire and air and Paluxia of the earth and water. And that something happened. I have not studied, had the time to study it very thoroughly. Uh, I wished to spend more time there, but we needed to get food for Vator, so I had to come here. It is the, uh, uh, it is our lot in life that we who travel in ways of faith must on some times, in some ways, accept the mysteries because we have too much to do. Yes. Nonetheless, I find it interesting. The prelate would be fascinated to see those paintings. Perhaps we can exchange information if they are somewhere where she can travel to. Uh, they're half a day's ride north of here. I'll let her know. Perhaps sometime um, you can arrange a visit for her. Well, uh, I have to get this caravan back north to Vitor. But after that, I will be making a quick <coughs> trip back to here. Um, and I intend to spend a week in the temple. There are those who are interested in what I can do and may wish to learn such as Dr. Alida. Uh, she is... Um, she is worrisome. The good doctor has served here in the city for a long time. One of many. She is skilled. But I fear that she is too much affected by the, the work that she has done. That she has seen too many difficulties. Seen mm. the unfortunate results of backroom and back alley politics that have resulted in the deaths of a number of people mm. whom she could not save. Understandable. Tread carefully with her. If I she will. is truly devoted to Poluxia, devoted to your cause, then, then she is yours to, to manage, to grow, to teach. My... She is your fire to tend, as we mm. say. My wish with, I guess, my branch of Paluxia is to make things better for those who <laughs> have little or cannot defend themselves. It is my aim to work with with groups who also wish to help not to not to create more wars but to end them, prevent them assuage them if there is another of the Ignean teachings I can pass on to you and it may not be one you are happiest to hear 
We are taught that conflict is inevitable and will happen, just like fire. It may happen at random, it may be deliberate, but it will happen. It is not our power to stop them all, but to make sure that the fires are contained, are controlled, are managed, are recognized. And that is, in essence, my wish as well. I, if I could end all conflicts peaceably, I would, but I do not believe there is anyone who has Not that even the power. gods have that kind of power, no. nor would they want to exercise it. No. To do so would reduce us to nothing more than plants. My aim is to alleviate the collateral damage, to help people work together where possible instead of against each other. Um, now to demonstrate that we are not without means to help those. And as you've been walking along, you've realized you've been traveling southward towards the docks. And you start cool. to hear right, the go. sounds of uh, hooting and hollering and the occasional just explosive fire and loud cracking sounds. And now you can see the, uh, the members of the Ignean church gathered along the dock sides, working to free the boats with large gouts of flame, which mm -hmm. in some places are just tearing up the ice, and in other places are letting it uh, soften enough that others with long poles, the ones you'd seen uh, having been worked on before, uh, with metal ends, are, mm -hmm. are breaching the ice where it's been weakened by the fire. One boat burns in the distance, and someone says, God damn it, Fredo. <laughs> uh, actually, you see that it, it, the flames are able to lick right up to the sides of the boats, and boats themselves do not seem to be lighting up on fire. Nice. And you you do smell a little bit of burning pitch, Yeah. Uh, which would have probably been put on the outside of the boats to seal the boats from the water. Yeah. Uh, but it does seem as though they're very being very, very careful to control the flames. Um, you see, in fact, one person, and it takes you a moment to realize that it's not the flames that are being cast along, but actually a person walking along the edge of mm, the ice, I literally know burning on fire. Uh, and you've seen the power of the Kmar before. Mm -hmm. um, and where they oh. walk, the, the ice is getting soft. And you can see, they can actually see yeah. their footsteps being carved into the ice as they move fairly quickly along uh, to not be uh, taken off of the ice itself. I wave to him. Nice uh, to see he's still around. <laughs> Um, oh, before I forget, I met uh, another of your order. Oh? Um, flame Keeper uh, Felicia Oswood in <laughs> Rackdale. Young Oswood, um, one of the youngest Flame Keepers. And mm. uh, is she, she doing well? I believe she was very bored. Uh, there are, uh, There is almost no one left in Rackdale now. Um, I had heard that the bridge was impossible. Yes. Um, I desired a path through, so I made one. Uh, she was she was very very useful in uh, in doing uh, in helping with that. She will appreciate uh, that uh, both in her having a chance to do something interesting and also in having a chance to help. Yes, she's, um, <laughs> she's very young and far too young to be properly made a flame keeper. But there was a need for someone to be placed near that area. And I'm pretty sure that the, 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 the leaders put her there to be close to her family. Oh, good. Her family raises I, rocks in the nearby town, nearby uh, hills. Well, I think it is probably a, a good place for her. Um, it's not a big place. She should be able to handle what happens. It is um, a place with very few locals and a lot of people traveling through. Yes. It's not easy to take a place like that. I've been to one before. I've not always been here in the Queen. Mm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a simply a recruitment trip. Mm. I had been actually stationed in the Queen. Oh. The ringing most of those people knew down here. But I was traveling up through Plowshare and through uh, the farther northern areas. Not far as not as far north as where the fighting is happening. Mm. Close. Um, 
looking at this there's a spell I've been using recently that may be able to help with oh. this problem uh, at the docks. You only need to be uh, the ships only need to be freed from the dock. We're working on the gates themselves. The the ships need movement first. Mm. Um, I might be able to help. Uh, if I may. By all means, do we need to step back? Um, well, if there's a... Uh, I'm assuming there's like a... Excuse me. Yes, it's lawnmower day. It's a beautiful, beautiful lawnmower day right now. Uh, well, yeah, Sunday's traditionally lawnmower day. Yeah. Um, but we're taking it back. Yeah, I'm assuming <laughs> that there's like there there's some like piers that go out and there's like ships docked in either Essentially, side sort yes. of thing. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to go out. Uh, the piers themselves are what, like 20 feet wide. Uh, probably feet, 40 feet because okay. they they service a lot of cargo on both sides. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, I won't go for the big ships. With this, because I'm gonna try for a twofer. Uh, but uh, if there's gonna like just medium-sized ships, enough that it'll fit inside a hundred-foot span. <laughs> okay. So thirty feet on either side of the. I mean, the you pier. won't get the whole ships in that span, but you would get like half of the half of the size of the ship. Because forty feet of the the thing itself plus another thirty feet on each side essentially mm. is all you're getting. Yeah. Okay, that's why I was hoping for like smaller ships that might be narrower than thirty feet. Um, there's some very small ships that would be qualifying for that. Because um, like a, a ship that's sixty or eighty feet long is only going to be about twenty five or thirty feet wide. Yeah, uh, but you're yeah. Although they're more barges. Yeah, maybe. these are most these. these okay, I'll just ships. pick one then. Okay, uh, it's just a little less showy. Um, and I'll uh, cast you, control water. You do see some curious uh, uh, Igneans there, full, wearing their full white robes with the red on them, uh, and you can see the flame keeper kind of just sort of gesturing for them to move back. Yeah, well, bit. yeah, I'll pick one that's not got people around it. Um, and uh, yes, I will stand there in my uh, my blue uh, robes and armor, edged with green and the big crystal shield. Um, and uh, yes, I cast Control Water uh, under it. Um, Is that an instant spell? Yeah, I believe so. Might be one it, minute, but I. It's either uh, instant or an action. Actually, it's on my list of spells. One action. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, now, under it, one of the things, uh, and I'll, I won't center it on the boat. I'll set it so that the edge of it is a little bit away from the away from the dock, so I'm not directly affecting the dock with it. Uh, one of the things you can do is cause water to rise up to 20 feet if you're in a enclosed area. Uh, if it's not an enclosed area, what it does is makes a wave uh, that runs down the length of it. Um, I'm not going to go for a 20 foot wave. I'm just trying to put a one foot wave under the ice. I'm trying to make the water push up against the ice, but just in one area, and move it along. So that there's a, basically the ice gets, uh, at every point as it goes along, will have a, uh, a point pushing up against it so that um, it we may crack. It. Yeah. Um, okay. And then, because I've got 10 minutes of this, uh, assuming that just like one foot of wave isn't going to be a lot of strength to put against it, he will slowly ramp it up and sort of keep it just moving along, moving along, and raise the, try to raise the water a bit higher just as he's going. Okay. Uh, but doing it slowly enough so that it's not going to cause a major disruption with the ship uh, when it happens, uh, but just start working the ice and uh, okay. hoping to crack it um, uh, and disrupt it. So you're taking this spell and doing a much more subtle version than what it's normally designed to do. Well, Because it's normally designed to literally creates a 20-foot wave, crashing wave. Yeah, well, the thing um, is, it, when you're raising the water, the spell says you can raise it up to 20 feet. It can be any distance in there. 
uh, when it goes to say a 20 foot tall wave that travels once yes a when it goes to the wave part it says it creates a 20 foot tall wave uh, but the water I'm assuming that since I can control the water when I'm fl when I'm flooding it normally I can control the height of the wave they just didn't phrase it that way which effect are you looking at flood Spell. There we go. Control of water. Yeah, if you choose an area in a large body of water, you instead create a 10 foot, 20 foot tall wave that travels mm -hmm. from one side of the area to the other. I say, the first line is you cause the water level of all standing water in the area to rise by mm -hmm. as much as 20 feet. But it's not standing water. Yes. But what I'm saying is that there are two parts. In that one mm -hmm. says I can adjust, I, I don't have to go 20 feet, it can right. be as much as. The other one says it's a 20 foot wave. I think that that's supposed to be adjustable as well. So it's not just, oh, it's enclosed, I can do anything up to 20 feet, but it's open, it's got to be 20 feet. I mean, it is pretty specific in the way it says it. Uh, what I'm going to say is you are, you are kind of trying to split the difference, you're trying to use the spell in a very subtle way. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you make a wisdom challenge sure. uh, to control it with that much because you've not even used the spell that much. Um, I'm going to make it. Well, a, I'd uh, use it a number of times against the snow, but yeah, but not but not ice and water and yep. wind in this situation because normally also with that wave there's a, there's a pretty good chance you'll capsize whatever ships are in the water. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's being very subtle. Um, yep. So uh, I'll make it a wisdom test. We'll make it a difficulty. Uh, I'll give it a difficulty 15. So it's a, it's a difficult task. If there's ways you feel like you could moderate that task or you could uh, improve that. Could sort of I that. use the fact that I'm trained in Arcana, which is spell stuff? This isn't spell stuff. This is directly calling upon your goddess. Yeah, but I'm casting a spell. It's, I mean, that, that's, I am directly casting it, a spell. It, and then it's a spell in terms of the game mechanics, but in terms of the world, it's, it's calling upon your goddess to do power. Okay, but um, in talking about doing a role, which is game mechanics, mm -hmm. can the fact that I'm actually trained in arcana and how to do spell stuff affect my wisdom score, or is it just going to be a stat check at a 15 difficulty? I'll allow you to make an arcana roll to to try to do the bounding of it. If you get the roll successfully on that one, uh, then you'll have advantage on the wisdom check. Okay. Uh, let's set the difficulty for that one. Uh, that one also at moderate, so also at 15. I get a 17. You get a 17. So you are starting to summon the power for this and starting to think about some of the ways you had done magic before, because you mm. were somewhat of an arcane spellcaster before. You're, again, that's changed, but um, you never had the formal training in it. You've seen Zach is kind of with the, mm. the way that he parameterizes his well, spells. If you want to see it from a religious angle, I'm also trained in religion. Uh, true, true. Um, but, but I mean, I I made the first right. Role so really you you start to thing. you start to to think in terms of you know the, you very much controlling this this normally mm. quite chaotic spell. It's really a spell meant to do a lot of massive effect on a, on a, on a scale mm -hmm. uh, and trying to make that more subtle. So at this point now, you think you've got a framework in which you can put your mind in. Now it is a matter of feeling the energies uh, as you deliver them out. So the tendrils start to flow outward towards you, start to touch gently over the, over the ice surface and your wisdom roll. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a 10 and a 1, so that's a 13. That's a failure. 13. So, you begin to send the energies out, and you, at first you think, okay, I've got a hold on this. You can feel yourself being pushed back, almost as though you're standing in the wave itself, and this force of energy is, is threatening to roll over you. Uh, the energy starts to flow upward. You can hear now cracks multiple along the, the edges of the boats as, they, uh, they are, as the ice itself is starting to buckle a little bit from the pressure of the water underneath. Mm. Um, and then it suddenly spikes upward. One of the one of the pieces of ice just cracks in two, spiking upward. A waving wave started popping out of there, and then another one cracks up, and another one cracks up. Suddenly, around this boat, uh, threatening to swamp it, comes this okay. wave of water. Then I'll stop that. Um, well, yeah, because I can change from round to round what I'm doing. Okay. 
Uh, what's what's the next effect you're going to do? Uh, well, the next effect is I'm just going to leave it flat for now. Okay. Uh, and see what the effect on the ice has been. The water starts to flow back over the ice that's still there, and you can see it sort of sort of uh, throw, uh, sliding out across the ice. You see some of the igneans who were kind of nearby, and the Kmar start to move back away from the, the ice uh, because they don't want to be okay, caught well, in the water. Okay, well, in that case, I'll just pull it back down in. Okay. Uh, and you the water subsides down around the boat. The boat itself is starting to rock pretty mightily in the area, uh, but uh, it does not seem to have capsized, at least doesn't, the ice doesn't seem to have okay. cracked through well, it. And if it's rocking, then it's not caught in the ice anymore. Right, exactly. Um, um, might take a little more practice. Um, and you see now the, the, the ripples that are still yeah. copying, uh, coming across the ice as it starts to crack in multiple places. The ice still uh, till uh, uh, denser or lighter than the water, so still floating. Yeah. But now that entire section starts to crackle and spread outward. Okay. It has released this ship, and it has kind of cleared part of the lane, going towards the other as well. Yeah. Um, um, it's difficult to subtly control it though, and you are feeling kind of the, you're, you're pra almost practically rocking with the water itself, mm. as you feel like you're you're uh, uh, pushing beyond the the the, uh, the control, the subtle control yeah. of the spell. Um, I will redirect the flow of the water. Okay. Now for a bit, just to push the the ice further away from the ship. Okay. Um, um, the ice now crackling into smaller and smaller pieces starts to pile up on itself and mm. starts to almost push almost like a, a, a snowbank or clearing back of the ice as it starts to pile up. Yeah, and I'll try to do it to like, to the one side so it's not in front of the ship when they have to, okay. to leave. As it piles on top, more and more ice gets broken from just the weight that's on top of it. Um, I say, I, I tell you, unfortunately, I can only do one section at a time uh, but uh, uh, any of any of you who has more experience with this spell um, uh, may have a better chance with it this is the first time I tried that the uh, flame keeper comes over to you that was impressive uh, water is not an element we deal with yeah. Um, Our force tends to be in opposition to water more than in control of it. You did something interesting here, but I'm sure you have better things to do. You said you had well, food that needed to go to hungry pe people. Yes, and, well, I should first have to get the food, but I have, that's what I have to go to the market for. Um, I'm sure there are a few fishermen here who might have a good deal for you. Yes, um... Hmm. What happened to be on that on that boat that was just in there? Because <laughs> I freed them. I haven't freed the rest of them. But uh. Uh, and you see now uh, they've kind of pulled up the gangplank, which had fallen away because they, the ship mm. had been rocking so much. It gets kind of plunked down back on the the deck now that the water's calmed down a little bit. And you see uh, a uh, a burly looking gentleman. Uh, kind of before the thing's practically even touching the ground, kind of leap on top of it. The the gangplank kind of bow, bows a little bit as he, as he bounds down onto the the uh, the shore and comes quickly up to you. At first, you're thinking he's furious. His fists are tightly uh, 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 tightly closed, and there's a, a, a red face uh, from uh, just ac across his face is purely red and sweating. Uh, and then he kind of walks up to you, and he's got this this expression that's probably permanently carved into uh, uh, dismay or, or uh, anger. And it comes over to you, he looks at the flame keeper, nods, and then comes to you and claps his hands on his shoulder. That was brilliant. My ship's been stuck there for a week. Those folks uh, have been helping, but I didn't know how long it was gonna take until they got to me. Sorry for the bounciness. Uh, ah, we're used to it, I mean, we would have appreciated a little more warning. Normally we can see a squall coming from a hundred miles away. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I often forget that. Um, are you, you able to... <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, that... Yeah. 
And we're going to take... Actually, uh, Zora, that spell might work better on the gates as well, since they don't tend to bounce much. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, hopefully your travels from here will, uh, will not be too difficult. Um... Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to make a fine time now once I get the gates open. Uh, uh, name's Captain Maslow, by the way, and he puts a meaty hand out for you to shake. I uh, shake Your it hand kind of disappears. It's he just mm-hmm. he's got these enormous, well, uh, 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 well-muscled hands, uh, probably because he's been a fisherman and at sea for a long time. Okay, I'm wearing gauntlets. <laughs> you feel the gauntlets even going like, a little bit uh, from the massive... Uh, you're probably very glad to be wearing gauntlets. Mm. Uh, under the under the unintentional uh, friendly assault. Yeah, I say, oh, I just uh, wanted to help. I wish I could do more, but that was about the the last of that I can do today. Well, that was pretty brilliant. Um, um, you wouldn't be looking for some cargo, would you? What kind of cargo do you have? Uh, you have any food? Uh, fish, mostly. Deep fish. I couldn't sell much here. I mean, they've sold a little bit, but the market's, well, it looks over the flame keeper. The market's pretty shite right now. There's nobody mm. coming in to take anything out. And everybody around here is hoarding everything they can. We've got... 20... No. 19 wagons... Uh, that are looking to get... Uh, to buy food to take to Vator because they're starving. Sweet waters, that's a lot. I don't have that much fish. But I can make you an offer on what I do have. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll negotiate whatever a reasonable price yeah. for him would be. It's a little over half of your shipment can be filled with the fish that he has. Mm-hmm. Um, the <laughs> the fish, oddest part about this fish. is his fish is actually remarkably well preserved because it's frozen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's okay, it's going to stay frozen. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, and what he has are basically large, uh, would be equivalent of tuna. Mm-hmm. So they're massive, yeah. massive Big fish. Big bluefin. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he has those that have been basically frozen practically since they came out of the water. Um, and certainly as long as he's well, been here. Well, uh, thank you very much, sir. The, the people of Vitor will uh, sing your praises. I'll just tell them that Maslow's fish is the best. That I will. Uh, do you know any other seamen here who are... Uh, I'm not going to say it. Uh, interested in selling their goods? Uh, uh, I could probably round up a few. If you got that big a caravan, they'll be happy to have it. Sure, we'll, uh, I mean, we'll buy it all for I mean, a, a reasonable price. Uh, I mean, we're looking to get as much as we can, but I mean, you, I mean, you need to make your own uh, profits as I'm well. I'm sure we can make you a deal. <laughs> and he slaps you on the, on the shoulder. Once again, you're happy to be wearing that heavy armor. Clang. As even then, it's, it's a little like... <laughs> As you dip down a little bit. Now, if you excuse me, i got to go to a dig my crew out of a few bars they've probably fallen into. Good luck. Where can I find you when I find the other captains who might have some some um, to sell? I'll give them the name of whatever hotel at the edge, or in the, at the edge that okay. we're all parked at. All right. uh, yeah, there, are, there are other merchants there as well who have uh, funds with which to buy stuff. Uh, I was just hired by the city itself. Uh, so again, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, don't 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 worry about it. Just mention the name Maslow. Um, that I'll that I will do. The flamekeeper turns to you. That was impressive. That was uh, a little dangerous. More than I expected. Yes, I mostly have been using it to move snow. Uh. Um. It actually works amazingly well that way, uh, but uh, um, yeah, I don't. I haven't had much chance to play around with water spells, so uh, we yeah. don't. <laughs> but the subtleties of fire are difficult to master, and we make yes. sure that all of our all of our trainees go through a lot of exercises to master. Oh, I wish I could do that warm aura thing that you guys have. <laughs> it is a blessing of Ignis. Uh, I doubt you'll ever have that. Yeah. No offense, but... No, my blessing lends more towards healing people. So... That's sufficient. Um, and... I mean... Uh, um, do you mind if we head towards the uh, 
the inn. Uh, I've or got a few oh, more well, minutes, okay. but... Uh, uh, well, I, we can talk here then, that's fine. Um, I did want to uh, talk with you uh, when I came here um, uh, about working together in the future. Just, I know that uh, your God and my God don't really get along, I would imagine. That does depend you on what know. stories you actually believe. I've, uh, the prelate has dug up a few interesting older tales that read more like romance novels than they do anything else. Yes. There was an interesting pair of plays that I missed, but I was reading through the scripts on the way down. It was very interesting. I never trust the theater myself. Uh, no. The guy who wrote them was murdered horribly by a necromancer shortly after. Everybody's a critic. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I... Uh, whatever the ways that our deities feel towards each other and each other's followers currently, um, uh, I would very much like to work with you in the future rather than, well, not working with you. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I've seen you be trustworthy. I cannot speak for the church mm. as, in as much as well, I suppose you can speak for yours. I but think one of your guys is setting fires right now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Some guardsman by, going by going, <laughs> uh, I can That's assure you that all of my people are setting fires. It's, it is trying their hardest. Ice good. doesn't burn well, but... We've managed. Um, I hope that we can remain friends professionally as well as personally. Certainly. Um, but I would caution you. Be very careful whom you take to your take to your heart as far as your church is concerned. And be careful in what you teach them. If there's one thing that we do very cautiously, it is recruit. We only mm. take those we feel can withstand the fire of the knowledge. And those that cannot will burn. I have been thinking about that. Um, if, this is actually what I meant to get to earlier, but we had a tangent. Um, when, after I've delivered this, the fruit to Vittura, I will be returning here and then heading to the sanctum for a week to do what discussion I can with those who are interested. If the prelate wished to come up at that time and study what is there, I would appreciate it. I can somehow read the language, but there's much that I do not understand. Well, now they're attempting to cut the grass that's growing <laughs> on the ice. <laughs> uh, need one of those uh, We can close that window, window to try to get rid of the sun. Yeah. It's fairly effective, but... There we go. Super effective. <laughs> um, and thankfully, it's not too hot today. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, yeah. Um, but yes, if she, if she, or you wish to come up, uh, I mean, I'm trying to keep to its location secret from the public at large, just in case. But I believe I can trust you and her. If you are attempting that, then you better build a public mask. Because word will get out. Word is already getting out. Yeah. People know that you are traveling between the Queen of the Tour and... I have been thinking of starting a temple in Vator, as that's where I will be heading back to, but I do not know where events will take me in the near future. Of course. Gods are fickle, and their power followers must live with it. Um, and just in case word gets around, um, I was in Farhaven for sh a short period. Uh, Apparently my presence there was causing disruption with the local religious neutrality functions. Uh, so I left. Um, just to be sure 
uh, Farhaven did not in any way bring me in or even consider the thought of me setting up anything there. Uh, they understand that uh, the Igneans wish to have a temple there. Flamekeeper Oriandis has been trying. Uh, the closest he's come is to Shearwater. Yes. I believe they're building the temple still. I yes, I was there when they started. And I... <laughs> Flamekeeper Oriandis is dedicated. He is hardworking. Perhaps not quite as open-minded as some of us. But it wasn't too bad when I met him. I expected him to be a jerk. He may but not. He wasn't. Well, at the time when you met him, were you openly, were openly wearing the symbol of Paloxia? I did kind of get in his face, yes. Well, the fact that you don't seem to have any visible burns means you, were, means you probably get along reasonably well at the moment. Mm. But I know that his frustration has been growing as relates to Farhaven. I, I do not think he will make much I don't think he will get in any further than he has uh, I'm surprised you had as much luck as you did I wasn't trying to start anything I was just going up there to work and the husband of the avatar wished to know more about what his wife was going through husband? Uh, yes well uh, the avatar there's a woman up there who the Avatar works through. I see. Or becomes. It's a little weird. Neither of them seems to understand it. Hmm. But uh, in teaching him, others became interested. And it became a bit of a public spectacle. <laughs> um, kind of became a thing. So I was eventually quietly asked to leave. That was fortunate. Um, uh, there have been flame keepers that were ejected a lot less politely from Farhaven. I get along well enough with Valencia. Valencia? Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, her granddaughter's here, here with me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, that was a That was also contention. very surprising. Well, her daughter is very stubborn. Also... Possibly a little powerful. I don't quite understand it, but be careful. There are still those who wish to come into this land in every way. It may seem like a child, but it may not be at all. Mm. I will keep my eyes open. Um, it would be a shame if you had a hag into your party. Mm. Um, and apparently the. The centaurs are somewhat interested, too. Uh, so I'm going to have a centaur student, possibly. <laughs> he that's says that kind of fast. <laughs> that was unexpected. That's even more surprising. The centaurs yeah. usually are quite standoffish. They have their role to play in the great plan, as we believe, but uh, mm. they have more fire in their spirit than most people realize. This one has a lot of storm in her spirit. Mm. It's going to be an interesting week. Well, I will have to leave you to it. They, uh, they are good at what they do, my, my, the members of my church, but they sometimes get a little carried away. And with this ship for freed, we're going to need to release the gates sooner rather than later. Yes, well, um, I bid you well. Uh, it was very nice to see you again, and, and thank you for your help. Um, no, and be calm. We've got this. Yes. Uh, I expected that you would. Um, I just had an idea, and I, I've got to play these ideas out, or they, they uh, get to me. Be cautious with that as well. But good travels to you, and I hope that your church flourishes to be the good thing that you wish it to be. That is, I believe, the best I can hope for. And with that, we'll move away from uh, Amrun for the moment. We'll essentially, at this point, you are collecting those those, uh, yeah. those if we want, cargoes together. I can together. just narrate the rest of 
what happens. I, there wasn't necessarily going to be any. Yeah, big that was the only encounter that I expected. But uh, yeah. also, we're trying to get the time timeline back on, yeah. on track again. So, from your perspective, uh, just to make sure that I have the timeline correct, uh, you are going to be traveling up to, back to Vatour, yeah, which will put you at the end of the sixth month. No, the 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 food caravan back to Vatour would be around the beginning of the sixth months. Okay. And then I was going to head back down to do the temple training and then back up. So I'd be okay. there just after the end of the season. And for Zacchaeus, mm -hmm. because you also have a calendar which is specific. Yes. Where are you at the beginning of the sixth month? I am. Hip deep in books. Probably. And do you Somewhere. remember the date that we, we chose for um, when we last had you and Clara together when Emerald came back? I think we said it just said it was a day that he wasn't reading. Right. But I'm trying to get the timeline to work out here because it got really complicated. Really <laughs> awkward. Oh my God, the elder is just like, mm, I'm bringing food. Um, I'm bringing food. People. Because um, I think it, it's... Spend time with family. It was, uh, this one. Yeah. The At the end of month six, I was done reading the... On the fifth week, no. They're the, only four weeks. Yeah, but <laughs> the end of the by the end of the month, fifth month, month circle okay. had been completed. Okay, so it was probably around the end of the fifth month. All right, it was month or, six or right? early month six. So, I finished the tarsal books at the end of the fifth week. No, the first day of the sixth week. Oh my god, six months, month number six, day week five. number four, day number one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you're returning back to to the tour for a couple of days will be in the first basically, week of the sixth month. Around that, yeah, basically. It would be after the the port, or after the circle had been completed, but before okay. he's finished studying the books. Okay. Uh, so it's probably around the time that um, that well, uh, I remember had you showed said up. Everything got shifted well, by one the, day because I got time. The gate wasn't finished until the end of the sixth month, what you just told me. Fifth month. No. Oh, the fifth month? Okay. I wasn't yep. finished reading okay. the books until like almost the end of the sixth month. Okay. Yep. All right. So... We'll catch you up at that point okay. for Clarg and Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. You had completed that little discussion with Bazo the Sage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll say this is in that sixth month, basically, just before he gets back. Okay. Um, you have another meeting set up with Emerald, which would be in the, basically the end of the sixth month, okay. Okay, which would yeah. be about the same time you were turning back to Vitoria. Yeah, for finally, yeah. Get this timeline to work out eventually. And I'm just, I can be wherever. Yeah. Uh, I'm going you, back. You're the least of my worries because <laughs> I, I kind of have you uh, doing laps basically back to Pavage Glen with multiple loads of food. Basically. Which is making a huge impact in that area. Um, and I'll bring food both to Vatora and to Wellstone and Waterstone. Yeah, basically, you'd be taking one of the wagons, which would make the, the route back. Now, that part is not carved out. Yeah. So that would take you like two days to reach Waterstone from Vatora, which is normally less than a day. Yeah. Um, so that'll take up some of your time. and But as we return back to Vatour, you've had that discussion with Basil the Sage, and one of the things he urged very, very uh, quickly should be done is to talk to Alistair Woodcomb, the council member, because his, so far as you know, his uh, chief assistant, uh, Peter Cantor, was a shapeshifter of some yeah. kind, or at least had been assuming Peter's form when he had been killed. Uh, had also at one point taken on Alistair's form, which is also very curious. Mm -hmm. So, you've returned from delivering uh, the pipe, I believe? Yeah. So that would be... To uh, Emerald? At the very end of month six. Uh, or no, did I have it, to... We're in, the, we're in the beginning of, mix, of month six. So it's the first, first week in, in month mm -hmm. six he comes okay. back. You deliver the pipe really quickly, and he says, great, come back in two weeks. Right, okay, gotcha. I told him I tried some of the pipe too, and it worked pretty damn good. Yes, yes. Um, so, again, what are you doing? What are your steps you're taking from this point on? Okay, so I'll probably. Well, I'm assuming Clark is. We're sorting the stuff together. Cause well, yeah. yeah, you can also yeah. ask him. Yeah, because if uh, both of us go to see Alistair, he'll recognize both of us as the city heroes. Yeah, and he's more, more likely to, to let us in. More you better. seem to have a better way with people than I do. I don't know why, but I don't know either. <laughs> so we should. And just... you've only ever seen a couple of half orcs in the city. 
Uh, it's very, very rare here to see them. They were much more in a queen. So do we just knock on his front door? Sure. Mm. All right. Let's go. I mean, you are aware of we, where he lives. You know that when he's in council sessions, it's at the, the council building. Okay. Um, so we will make our way to his office, or at least where we believe he will be. Okay. Well, or we can just wait for him at his office, and when when the meeting, like, some, whenever he's done his meeting, we'll be waiting by his office. We'll be polite. Stock yes. Okay. Stock his office. <laughs> okay. Pretty much. Um. So you go to the council building where yeah. they're basically inside having their their meeting. Um. There is a, a number of citizens here, um, with. It looks like reams of paper, like, or or pads of not pads of paper, rather rolls of paper. Um, probably trying to get their their personal business before the council at some point, um, and some of them are pacing. You can see there's a lot of concern and worry among the group. Um, they do seem to be fairly well dressed. They're probably of nobles. You've seen a few of them actually from your parents and when they've been meeting them uh, before, uh, but no one seems to recognize you as such at the moment. You did see a few of them at that party actually as well. But they seem to be very self-absorbed at this particular moment. They were not any of the people whose asses I had to kiss, so I just didn't notice. Well, you wouldn't recognize them from this angle. Okay. <laughs> yes? Uh, what's the security like as we approach the wherever we're going? Uh, there are, uh, there have been guards kind of at the, at the front of the building. There are two guards on either side of the council doors, the main okay. council doors. Uh, who are every once in a while when one of the petitioners kind of want, wants to kind of go up to the door, do kind of hold them back. They're carrying pikes uh, and do hold them back from going in. Okay. Clark will be fully armed, so just as a note. Okay. But uh, conspicuously armed? Oh, yeah. Okay. He's not hiding it. Okay. They, are, they are watching you, yeah. um, and the, uh, kind of the petitioners seem to give you a wide berth when they, when they happen to notice. Most of them, again, seem to be fairly self-absorbed. You see a few of them kind of bickering with each other. Uh, one of them just it seems like they've been waiting for a while, uh, takes the, the piece of paper they have and just throws it at the other one and then walks out and mm -hmm. off. Uh, you get the feeling that some of these are business dealings that aren't quite working out or there's... you. Uh, are you going to listen to the conversations or no. stuff back? Okay. Well, are we next to the door or...? Uh, no, you're behind all of these people who seem to be assembled in a, in a makeshift line um, that uh, seems to be headed towards the door. Okay. One by one, they are starting to be drawn in. Um, the uh, first ones that go in seem to have a uh, successful discussion, whatever it is, they come out looking very self-satisfied. Uh, and then you can see the, the impact on the people later on in line as they are watching them come out successfully as they feel like, oh, a little diminished, they're probably having less of a chance if they've already approved this earlier offer. They, you you kind of get the sense that some of them felt like they should have been there earlier and there was somebody here maybe from Dawn uh, that got in. Um, but then there's only four groups uh, in ahead, of, ahead of you. Uh, the next group comes out uh, just crying. You're not sure exactly what happened, but it looks like whatever proposal they made definitely did not go over well. Part of um, me almost wishes, wishes I would have cast an arcane eye and directed it in that room. It might have been entertaining. It's none of our business. Yes. I just keep waiting. The third group goes in, uh, comes out, uh, again looking satisfied, but not, not overwhelmingly so. Something of their proposal did go through, but clearly something did not. The fourth group uh, goes in. This is the, the group that where the person had left. And then the other person kind of picked up the papers. And you can see that while the others were working on them, they had another piece of paper were kind of scribbling over. It looks <laughs> like they were making a new version of whatever they just wrote, possibly cutting out the person who just left. Uh, and they come out uh, looking very satisfied. <laughs> Not jubilant like the first people were, but looking as though uh, they, had, uh, they had pulled one over on somebody. Uh, and the group just before you goes in. It's a, a woman and a young child, kind of out, outstanding in that not dressed like nobility, dressed a lot more poor. You uh, think you recognize her. Um, you think you recognize her as one of the people who worked at the food kitchen, hmm. uh, as one of the servers, one of the cooks that was there. Okay. Um, but she goes in with her young child, um, only about maybe eight years old, little boy. Um, and they go in very meekly. Uh, the guards actually hold the doors open for them to go in. Um, and they're in there for a lot longer than the rest had been there. 
Um, and then they are they merge. Clark will uh, uh, hold a piece of platinum. Okay. And as they go, he will serendipitously sort of shove it their way as they pass. Okay. Uh, make a sleight of hand roll. Sure. Counter pickpocket. Well, I'm not reverse pickpocketing, but I'm, I'm making sure Close. that the receiver is aware, mm-hmm. but it's not broadcasted across yeah. the room. Yeah, right. some subtlety involved. Yeah. Uh, 17. Okay. Yeah, the, they come out, and you can see there's concern across the, the woman's face. It's uh, not entirely sure why she was going in or, or what the result was. It doesn't seem to be jubilant, so it wasn't everything she was asking for. Mm. Um, and the young boy's just sort of looking around, curious, not really seemingly to understand what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a feeling that um, uh, the boy was probably brought along because she couldn't leave him with anyone, not for any other prop mm-hmm. or anything like that. Right. Uh, but uh, she half recognizes you as you kind of approach. Um, and then when you uh, slip the coin into her pocket, uh, she looks at you alarmed and then kind of reaches into her pocket and her expression changes from alarm to bewilderment to uh, uh, happiness. Clark it's, will ignore her from here on out. All right. Um, <laughs> and she's, you're just leaving her with this look on her face as you as you and and uh, Nax. Uh, are you going in or are you going to wait until oh, the council is well, over? As soon as mm-hmm. we're, we're, as long as we're not barging in, I think yeah. it's... No, it's yep, we'll just, wait our turn. Turn. They've just assumed you're petitioners like all the rest. Yeah, we'll, we'll, so. so I'll just walk in. All right. Might as well. Uh, you see the council chambers. Um, the upper ring of the chamber is where the five normally sit. Now only three, in fact, are there. One of the dwarf uh, representatives is not there, uh, but uh, Nora Wondersteel is there. And you see Tornkist, the, or Tornkeet, the other elven one, and Alistair there as well. On the upper ring, on the opposite lower ring, you see the administrators of the house, including uh, both of your parents, are actually there. That's part of what their role is: okay. is to help, is to be here, to take the notes, to implement the things that are talked about. Um, and your mother actually sees you come into the chamber, and she sort of there's a look of concern and surprise on her face because, uh, and you get she kind of mouths a word at you, the words at you like you doing here why didn't you tell me you were coming here <laughs> uh, your, 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 I didn't know I was coming here your, your father's just kind of na- taking notes um, <laughs> you get the sense that one of his roles is as council uh, council note keeper mm-hmm. um, so it's one of the reasons he knows everything and everybody and all the names nice. um, there's a, a, a person right beside the door an older gentleman uh, who asks and who is it that is presenting Psychus and Lana Porter and Clark. What was your last name again? Clark. <laughs> Clark. Clark. <laughs> and uh, the topic which you'd like to present to the council? Uh, we need to speak with Alistair. It's rather urgent. It's concerning uh, Peter Cantor, uh, or the lack of Peter Cantor. So you wish to address the council? Uh, I just want to make sure I can get an audience with Alistair. Should I just and go back to your office? He Wait. looks. He looks a little confused. Well, this is for petitioning the council. Oh. If you don't have a petition for the council, then we'll have to ask you to leave. No problem. Um, what, where can and we... Alistair, you hear Alistair's voice. Uh, is there something going on? Uh, what's the holdup? We would like to get through all the business today. Clark will wave. Um, we need to speak with you. Uh, let them in. Let them speak. And you can see he looks annoyed and angry a little bit, but also could be, as he said, he wants to get through the business yeah. of the day. Uh, he's sitting there alone. You do see that behind uh, Torn Keat is a young elf woman uh, who uh, kind of leans forward and, and whispers into his ear, and he just stolidly never really has much expression on his fra- face, kind of nods. Uh, Nora is uh, jostled awake by her, uh, her uh, behind her, uh, her assistant, a uh, male dwarf dressed in full plate armor, <laughs> and with a very large battle axe actually attached to the to his back, he's it's not something you would necessarily expect in the council chambers. But she's kind of jostled away because it looks like she had taken a, a bit of a cat nap. What was the time of the last event that Clark was at at the library? Like how many days ago was that? Or uh, ago? that was months ago at Feston. So about five months no, ago. No, I mean the the doppelganger. 
Yeah. Oh, the doppelganger? That was just about uh, a little under a week ago. Okay. Uh, and that was just, you caught him. Actually, it wasn't here. He had run into you, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, because he'd been, yeah, he was in the, like, the town square or something. He ran into him. Yeah. And he said, speak to my, my assistant. Um, have I got the timing wrong there? I'm just wondering when the doppelganger chase scene right. happened. That was like two days ago. Okay, that's what yeah. I wanted to know. Yeah. That was two, day, two days ago. That was after you had right. come to I think actually it was Zacchaeus that ended up talking to him at that point. Mm -hmm. And Zacchaeus had made a suggestion and then he passed it on to Peter. Right. Um, uh, Nora coming awake suddenly. Uh, what? What is it? Is it? Who are they? And uh, the the old man who uh, you spoke to at the beginning, presenting uh, Zacchaeus and Lena Porter and Clark. A business um, unspecified to deal with uh, Council Member Woodcombe. The speaker of the house, essentially. Uh, Where is his hand? Uh, Alistair, <laughs> greetings. Um, it's nice to see you. What have you brought before the council? Uh, more for you specifically. Uh, can we speak in private? Anyway? What, what is it, uh, Clark? Do you know the name of an individual named Peter Cantor? Well, of course I do. That's my assistant. I have killed him. And there's a shot, uh, a draw of breath from people around the room. Uh, the uh, and? the dwarf standing up behind Nora window, uh, stands up behind Nora, and you can see him reaching for the axe. And just two days ago, I killed you. <laughs> There's a now cries of outrage coming from the uh, the council, the junior council, essentially the sub council, uh, and uh, Peter, or, sorry, uh, uh, Alistair actually rap, raps on a gavel. Looks like he's the the caller. Order, order in this council. What what are you talking about? What what is this? I'm not dead. Carg will will uh, nudge Zacchaeus. You're up. Yes. Thank you for getting everybody's attention. There's yes. still a bit of murmuring in in the in the room, and and uh, and Alistair seeing you about to speak once again madly smashes on the gavel. As Clark has said, between you and uh, Peter Cantor, except Peter Cantor was not Peter Cantor. What do, what do you know of my assistant? He's missing or dead, but whoever was pretending to be him was a doubleganger. And the, there's also, a lot of murmur in the crowd in the back and here, like, a, a, a chain, what did he say, a shapeshifter is pretending to be? But didn't you hear Peter at the party last night? Um, Probably wasn't it last and, night. Uh, and <laughs> uh, there's, some strange, there's some strange murmurs going on. Uh, and again, Alistair calls for water. This time, uh, he's looking kind of Rather confused, a little bit angry, and he's banging away at his gavel even more forcefully. Uh, order, order in the council. What Can we speak about this somewhere more private? I'll lean in a little bit. The before dying, the shapeshifter. Uh, you shape too. You, you realize he's on the second floor of a round oh, room. I thought we were like on in a desk. Or in a no, no, no. It's it's the council chambers. Okay. It is the big think Parliament House, or think Parliament, or think uh, uh, Government House. This is the official chambers where they're doing the business of the day. Everybody's going to know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Everybody knows now. Yeah. Well, there, there's definitely a lot of rumors flying at the moment. Uh, Alistair is looking sharply at the two of you with a bit of confusion. Uh, and you hear from beside him, uh, Torn Keat, uh, speak up. Uh, perhaps this is some sort of internal business with you and your, your associates. Do we really need to be dragged through all of this? Uh, Alistair kind of looks over at him. Nora's like, I'm done for the day. I don't want to have anything more of this. I say we close out the chamber. Be done. And uh, Alistair's uh, looking at them and, and somewhat frustratedly. I agree. That's two out of three. Tor and Keith. I've already voted to get to leave. <laughs> All right. Chamber is done for the day. Everyone go home. The two of you in my office now. All right. Um, and you see him kind of gesture at the, the old man who was by the door as he kind of walks up behind you. Uh, this way, gentlemen. I will follow the guy. Um, lead you off kind of to the side, which leads you off to a series of offices. Uh, there's a lot of noises and murmuring behind you in the council chambers as the sub-council 
uh, is uh, is uh, trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Um, you feel a hand on your on your uh, on your shoulder mm -hmm. from behind. I'll turn around and see who it is. You see that your mother is standing behind you. What? What? Hey. What was this? What did you do? I didn't do anything. And you, you're a terrible influence on my son. Well, it's fine. He probably saved a lot of people. We'll find out how many in the near future. What is it all about? Uh, there was a... What was this about killing Peter? Oh, sorry, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Get out, Siri. You're not playing. <laughs> it's, the other, it's my other ghost. Okay. Uh, it's exactly as... What was that in the council chamber? Are you all right? She looks rather yes. concerned. Starts kind of leaning you left and right, looking for for blemishes. I'm still alive. No and looks looks into your eyes. Have you been sleeping? Yes. Have you been eating properly? I know you. For the most part. I can see it in your eyes. You've been reading too much lately. You really should learn to get out a little bit more. Walk. Working. I have been getting out, but I just keep getting almost killed. Anyway, uh, what? There was a changeling that was assuming the shape of Councillor Woodcomb's assistant. We and just, she looks around. Shh! You, should, you shouldn't say such things. There's already enough rumors going around town about all kinds of things happening. We've seen it with our own eyes. Well, still no need to cause panic. That's why we're on our way to Councillor Woodcomb's office right now. All right. Well, she kind of see or compose herself. Enjoy the rest of the day off. We were almost done for the day anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'll see you back at back home for supper tonight then that would be excellent the food at the library is getting increasingly mediocre well perhaps we can offer something a little better excellent I'll talk to you later uh, and she kind of composed herself and you see her like oh Elena and kind of walk off to the crowd and seem like she's just back into business mode you haven't yeah. seen your mother in this mode as often for a moment there she was totally in mom mode mm -hmm. <laughs> but then it's like oh, <clears throat> straighten up the, the shirt and uh, move back into into business. Okay. Uh, the old man has been waiting patiently. Uh, kind of, when a sub counselor uh, speaks to someone, they're still outranking him, uh, despite the other urgency of it. But he does kind of pull the two of you through the crowd. You can see some of the sub counselors are moving out towards offices, uh, eyeing you in particular quite uh, quite a bit, uh, giving Heart a bit of a, stop smiling. giving a bit of a birth. You notice as as there's kind of each of the doorways, there are two guards at each of the doors in here as well. And some of the sub counselors themselves, um, you you're, you're thinking, okay, that one's carrying a dagger. I'm pretty sure of it. Just the way that they're moving, you're pretty sure that one's mm -hmm. carrying a dagger. Uh, another one is using a staff, and you're thinking, they they could hit you with that. They might know a bit of magic too. Sure. Um, and then finally, kind of the the crowd winnows further and further as you move deeper and deeper in, passing more and more thresholds with guards. At this point, you pass through at least. Uh, uh, four sets of double doorways which you look back and you see yes they can be barricaded as well as having two guards outside and uh, finally uh, uh, if you'll just wait here gentlemen I'll, I'll make sure that Alistair is ready to receive you Clark will lean on something um, there's a bench there actually outside to sit and wait oh, sit on the bench um, kind of comparable to this, the library where the library itself used to be the, uh, the seat of a king and queen so it has it's a very f f uh, a lot of flourishes inside. Uh, I I may not have said this before, but the inspiration in my mind uh, visually for the great library is actually the Louvre, okay. which is a I was lucky enough to go, and it's an amazing uh, just demonstration of wealth, but also art and beauty and it, just the way it played out. And and that's what I, that's what's in my mind every time I think of the library. The council chambers and the council building are a little more practical, but you do again see that sort of deep, dark red wood, heavily stained paintings of past councillors uh, on the wall, and a very soft carpet there as well. And you're only waiting for a couple of minutes. You you see the door to Alistair's uh, office, uh, and you see other doors along the way. You, Alistair does not pass you, but the old man comes out and informs you that Alistair is ready to see you. Okay. And you get the sense that there's probably another way for him to get to his office where he doesn't go through all of that. Mm -hmm. um, the, so the building has its own secrets. You go through into what, in, in some ways, you, it surprises you a little bit as a more modest office you, than you might have expected from the previous, uh, previous area. Um, it is a nice, big, massive wooden desk that's there, very comfortable, uh, le red leather covered chair, um, there's a couple of bookshelves, there's a couple of busts of, uh, of uh, human figures, 
there's uh, two women and one man that kind of or, or, uh, arranged. You get the impression this might even have been maybe past human counselors or people that were important to the city. We're not really sure. Um, you uh, you see uh, Alistair sitting at his desk, uh, kind of looking at some of the sheaves of paper, and then he, when he sees you coming in, he shoves all those to a side. Sit down. Hey, I'll sit down. Now, my assistant has been missing for a few days. And what you claim is true, that you killed my assistant. Not your assistant himself. We well, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm trying to get to understand. Your claims in the chamber, chamber were outrageous, irresponsible, and frankly, probably the worst thing we could have heard right now. There are a number of rumors floating around the city, and I don't like it. Which other rumors are floating around? Well, let me hear from you first, and then I'll speak. The, the man being who was pretending to be Peter was, well, clearly not Peter, which we found out when... You killed him. Yes. Well, technically he did. So why did you kill him? I was not present for the backstory to that, so... He was resisting an arrest after a conversation that wasn't finished. Why was he to be arrested? What's the reason said on this? Well, I have certain individuals who believed he might have not have been what he seemed. And it turned out to bear fruit. So you had some evidence. Some rumors? Some actual evidence? What? I saw the uh, individual change form before my eyes. Okay. So your office has been infiltrated. So how long ago did was Peter replaced? It's hard to tell. When did he go missing? Two days ago. I'd imagine longer than that, but I don't know what these shape shifters are like. I don't know how, how smart they are. How long ago were the supposed rumors of his being something else? I would imagine months. Months? The last and first time that I saw him or he might have been himself, was when he was spirited away within a play going on in basically your honor. You were in the audience. Well, I remember it. Dismal affair. Boring as hell. Yes. Well, Supposedly historic, but I couldn't glean anything out of it. Your man was swept away in the crowd. I wasn't sitting with him, so I, I, didn't, I didn't see him there, but I just assumed he was with his family, or... Well, that was weeks ago. So anything you've said to him in weeks ago, maybe... Uh, You're certain it's been... that he's been replaced all this time. Yeah. It's a sound theory. It's, I'll have he, you know, too. He kind of stands up and, and turns around. He's got a bit of a window there um, leading into an interior court around the, uh, the, the council chambers. The window's half filled with snow because how much snow has been happening but there's a little bit of light and it's just you can just barely make out the, the outside of, above the uh, snow this is most distressing news gentlemen mm -hmm. Peter was my most trusted associate I thought I'd noticed something different in him but with all that's been going on for the last few months I know that he hasn't been able to eat entirely properly none of us have and I know that uh, he lost a child in the cold the uh, the play where he was swept away, the director was found assassinated. Well, I did tell you it was, it was a terrible quite play. Gruesome. Uh, within your own prison. Uh. So there's a larger conspiracy at work, and I don't think this is the only shape changer you have to worry about. This is. Uh, there's one less now. You're welcome. There was one in the library several months ago. I'm assuming, I'm assuming you've heard about it. I had reports. I'd spoken with, um, what's his name? Brightrock, Adrian Brightrock. Yes. These individuals are also hiring assassins. Hiring assassins? I'll show off a couple of holes. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the assassinations can be performed uh, with dark magic, as what happened in the prison. I see. This is very disturbing news, gentlemen. I, um... I'd like to ask a favor. Yes? I'd like you to bleed for me. 
Excuse me? He steps back, somewhat alarmed. Clark will pull out a dagger and set it on the table. What is this? What 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 is this? With your blood we can find out if you say If, if you, you bleed are, grey, you, yeah. You are changeling yourself. If you bleed red, I assume you bleed red normally. We'll assume that we're talking to a uh, normal counselor of a tour. The shape the changeling did. This is um, once. unusual. But if you're going to ask this of me, I'm going to ask this of you too as well. Certainly. Certainly. I'm going to clean the blade next. Uh, I have a pocket I knife. I would hope that it's clean, yes. Am I bleeding red? <laughs> <laughs> this would be the perfect time for a minor illusion spell, by the way. Hello, <laughs> LJK now. Um, so you, you, you prick your yeah. finger. Uh, it's effectively one point of damage. Don't worry about that yeah. necessarily. It'll probably heal by then. Uh, but yes, there's a, a bit of... Uh, uh, it is red, but your half-elven heritage does make the blood uh, shimmer slightly. Okay. Um, this is elven blood would also would shimmer actually more strongly than that. There's something noticeably different about it. Um, but the bold red of the human blood does dominate it. Okay. Um, the Alistair frowns, kind of looking at this very strange ritual that suddenly he's being asked to participate in. We do um, this all the time at the library. You what? Well, to figure out if somebody's a changeling or if they're who they say they are. At least when discussing important matters. If you're going to want something help, else, we're going to have to change about that library. If you're going to want help searching this entity or group of entities out, uh, this is how you do it. This is barbaric. Surely it's the only way yes, you're going to get my help. <laughs> There's got to be some better way. Uh, you next. Sure. You'll make a small mark. Okay. Ooh. Show off the colors and then make a show of wiping the blade off and handing it over. Um, and orcish blood tends towards green. So again, it's sort of this red-green tinged uh, color. Um, but it is most definitely not gray. This is... This is absurd. Hey, but he picks up the blade. Mm -hmm. He looks at it. Which blade is this, by the way? Just, Just a, a random plus blade? Just a one throwing dagger. Okay. Um, Something with a point. Remind me to increase my security. As he takes the blade, pulls out a handkerchief, cleans off the blade very, very particularly, and then uh, makes a, a nick across his palm. Mm -hmm. There, hopefully that will prove as evidence, and it is a red streak sure. across his, his palm. He sets the blade back down. Today, right now, you are who you say you are, and thank you for uh, yes. indulging us. Yes, well, oh, this know. is rather concerning. Who else do you think might be infiltrated? The Here's rest of the, the council? Thing. He took your face. My face? He mm -hmm. took your face My as well. face? I thought you said he looked like Peter. He did. He can take multiple faces. And before I killed him, he looked like you. Oh, dear. Has anything happened recently that you supposedly ordered that you didn't actually order? What do you mean? Make an insight check, both of you. D20 is here. 12. Uh, 15. 15. With the 15, um, there is something of a surprise at the specificness of his question, of Zacchaeus's question, about did you order anything recently? Mm. Um, what do you mean? What do you think Peter did? Uh, this thing masquerading as Peter? Well, if... Did Peter have the authority to give orders and to make things happen on your behalf? Yes, my seal would carry enough weight for him to carry through certain dealings. Are there any dealings or events which you did not authorize, which have happened in your name recently? And stick it. Well, I'll have to go over everything that, that we've been doing over the last few weeks uh, with the... Uh, food crisis. It's been the biggest issue. But uh, there were some... There was a shipment of food that was supposed to arrive about three weeks ago. We weren't sure exactly how they were going to make the trip up. We'd heard that the roads were impassable. A shipment of food. Did it arrive? Uh, Peter told me that it never arrived. It was uh, lost along the way. Whose or shipment was it? It wasn't a, a ruined shipment, was it? Or? 
I have a guess. Yes. Uh, Findleroy, Lord Findleroy. Yes, I know him. Is that the re, is that the uh, the source of the shipment? It was through his contacts that we were arranging the delivery. How do you know Lord Fendleroy? I've run into him once or twice. I see. Peter had um, recommended Lord Fendleroy as the contact, said that he had some people with particular skills when they was coming. He, uh... I thought maybe they were using the, the buried road. He stands... He uh, to make a lot of money on food he's been hoarding while this uh, shortage is going oh, on. By the gods. And Alistair kind of collapses down in his chair as he sort of, this starts to sink into him. They were going to. Why? What would be the, the benefit of, of all of that? Chaos. Crisis. Political change, shift of power. I see. I would imagine whatever major changes they're going to make to the policy of your town, you need more than one councillor to do it. Yes. Well, you've already done your part. Sorry. It was authorized. The initial shipment was authorized by me. The um, My seal is on it. Funds came from my... With any luck, there's still food here. That would be good. But uh, good way to save the day would be to release that food to the people mm -hmm. on behalf of the council. Do you know where it is? I'm sure I could find it for a fee. A fee. Of course. I've already saved your city once. The stories are, I suspect, slightly exaggerated, but I get your point. All right. Anyone you deal with from now on should be vetted. I would suggest talking with the library and getting uh, uh, individuals who would know such practices to use them. I can't ask everyone I meet to cut their hands. No, but I'm sure you two could figure something out. Do you know of another method? Something less I know intrusive? Of, of true but that's a bit exhausting. Uh, I can ask Adrian. I know he has a way, but that's that still required like cutting your hands, right? Or like the orb thing in the jig. No, I think it just was held near you. Well, the the Her orb, body. as you recall, last time because he used it on you when you first mm -hmm. brought the news to the change and changing again. Um, the orb has the ability to uh, react to the truth of someone, um, but it can't necessarily tell the deeper truth. Part of it was: is do they believe to be who they are? or essentially is the way it was phrased before, which is why it was able to be used. Is their form changeable is also somewhat detected, as you remember Elzera reacted to Elzera as well. Because um, mine went gray, not white. Right. right. Um, but the cutting of the blood uh, and the presenting to it seemed to be, for, at least to Adrian's comfort, a definitive answer. Okay. Uh, so it still required that, but some element could be used to it before. Because yep. um, I mean, you remember in the first changing attack, he just used it by itself. Okay. I have one last thing, and I'll leave you be after that. I wish to speak with Corrin uh, as, as soon as possible. My brother? Yeah. Why? He, He's not wrapped up in this, is he? I don't believe so, but he has some information I'd like to uh, discover. And it's important to me. I can arrange your meeting. You could go see him on your own, I suspect, but... So I want to make sure he's there when I get there. You don't think he's been replaced, do you? I don't uh, know. Not my brother. How secure is your city? It used to be a lot more secure. You know, for all the extra swords you've got running around in here, um, it doesn't seem like it. That was meant to be adding security. You heard the rumors now. I suspect. Some of which I will tell you now is not likely to be a surprise. Shadows. Kobolds in the sewer? The kobolds have been there for some time. Um, I've heard reports of them for 
months and months and months, but hadn't been terribly active. Not until the town square, where you encountered another cobalt, from what I understand, mm -hmm. that was preventing my statue from being erected in the town. But the shadows. Are you familiar with Marius's Blessing? Yes. It is a delightful restaurant uh, when they have food. It's been somewhat sl slim lately. Delightful, yes. But that's not the reason that a lot of us go there. A lot of us are going there to hopefully get a blessing, a real blessing. A vision. From Marius himself, a vision, yes. Alexia Ferendro used to talk about it all the time. She was frustrated she hadn't received any sort of vision. She had gone there on a regular basis. But I went once. Once for that purpose. I've been there before with other parties, but never seeking a vision. I had hoped to see something of, something of my future plans come to fruition. I didn't. Did you receive a vision at all? I did. I saw the city fall. I saw it overwhelmed with darkness. I saw the walls crumble. I saw people dying. Horrible things rising in their place. Any fire, meteors, fire raining from the sky? Not that I recall. Okay. Maybe it just likes giving people visions of the city falling because I've had two similar visions, except they involve more fire. It concerns me that the city is under threat. Yes, I will protect the city to the best of my abilities. Likewise. I had hoped that bringing in those forces would would head off the vision. I have consulted with numerous people, some scholars, some others. I even spoke to that, that crazy wizard in Waterstone. Salazar! <laughs> what did he have to say? I, I need to go it, catch up with him. It didn't help. In fact, if anything, it made me feel worse. What did he say? Or... What do you think he said? It seemed to confirm my my worst fears. And he told me that I was powerless to stop it from starting. But I was powerful into stopping it, uh, to starting it from, to stop. Well, let's get that wheel turning. Maybe it's already started. If you can find these stores of food, I will be very grateful. I can't say how they'll be distributed, but I'll make sure that at the very least get some. People need that food. We have things coming in from Pabbage Glens. I've had word that the road through Rackdale to the Bargeport Bridge might be open, but it's going to take weeks before anything's going to come out of that. Our friend is has gone down to a queen to pick up some supplies. He is bringing them back as quickly as possible. Well, I hope so. But yes, find me that food. And I will make some inquiries on my side to see if, see if we can weed through some of our people. Do so with caution. Yes, as soon as they know we're onto them, they're going to switch their tactics. If you likely. wish to reach me, uh, contact uh, him at the library. I'll see what I can do from my side. Despite these recent events, I am not completely without means, especially when I am aware of a threat. Leave that with me. I'll discuss with Adrian and perhaps Gerbo to see if we can engineer something to verify more people faster to see if they are who they say they are. I would appreciate that. Do so with some caution. Mm -hmm. That stunt you pulled in the chamber was... Not my idea. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah, but it got everyone's attention, didn't it? It did. But if there are, as you suspect, others who are hiding... Then they were protected before, and they're less protected now. But they may be pressured to act more quickly in whatever they're planning to do. Well, you direct this in the right direction. I'm sure we can solve the problem. Mm -hmm. I'll see what I can find out. In the meantime... Uh, Corin? 
Yes. Uh, do you want to meet him at a particular time? Uh, or? As soon as possible. It's a personal matter. Uh, I wish him no harm. I should see him tonight. Okay. I will have him arrange a meeting through Zacchaeus, I suppose. Perfect. All right. Have a good night. And Clyde will start to walk off. All right. Good evening. Um, Politely walk away. Yep. Um, as you make your way outward, uh, passing once again beside the, the guards that are there, uh, they don't seem to be too concerned because you're on your way out and you were guided in by someone who was trusted. Mm -hmm. So uh, as long as you're making your way outward, they don't seem to be taking attention really to you. Yep. Uh, and not being threatening, obviously. Make your way out to the cold air once again. Yep. Uh, there's still quite a buzz uh, outside of the chamber of the building. As you can see, the sort of a crowd has kind of lingered a little bit. It's like chaos You're not entirely around. sure if what's that? It's like chaos follows us around. <laughs> You're not really sure if it is related directly to what you were dealing with. There is a lot of stress in the city right now, and whatever presenting presentations the other had, others had made probably had an impact in the discussion. It is unlikely that your presentation had nothing to do with this uh, this outcome. But you make your way out, and what now? Um, Clark's intent is to talk to Corin at some point and also uh, secure an item. Okay. And that's what it. Time of the, what time of day is it? It's evening, basically, okay. at this point. Uh, we'll assume that you filled in a little more detail yeah. with, uh, with Alistair. Yeah. Um, so you're just going home? I wonder. Follow him. Okay. I'll go back to the library real quick, but I gotta get back to the house for supper. Because mom offered it. Okay. <laughs> but I'll go to the library. You, you and could take Clark with you if mm -hmm. you wanted to. Yeah, I suppose I could. Then we have to go back to the library because I have to talk to Adrian. So, yes, food first? Sure. All right. I'm sure they won't mind an extra person. If they do, okay. I can go beg in the street. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Well, I won't do it in front of your house, don't worry. <laughs> we never get anything good in front of the rich mm -hmm. people's house. No. Uh, we're getting closing in on six, so if we want to take a short bre break, so I can fill up a little bit of drink, is that good for everybody? Yep. yep. And sure. we'll get we'll start with Alzara here on the return. Because yeah, one thing I wanted to do was well, are we gonna like do the dinner afterwards or? Uh, yes. Okay. There's not gonna be much for the dinner scene unless you unless you <laughs> put more in the scene. I'm not gonna. No worries. And then I want to go and talk to Adrian about and Gerbo about like if there's another orb like that, how to like. Mount it like on a door frame so you can have like a scanner we'll, people walk. We'll get to that <laughs> after the break. How about that? Okay. All right. People are already aware that it's not working. Yeah. So <laughs> welcome back to the non-streaming edition of mm -hmm. uh, Legends of the Drawn Dials. I can also put these videos up on on Twitch, so I might mm. I might upload them there. They'll stay for a couple of weeks and people can watch them there. But I figure if they're on YouTube, then it's yeah. probably yeah. the easiest way anyway. Yeah, and they stay. And they stay, because um, YouTube is an infinite pit of time, as well as space and memory. So, on that note, <clears throat> let us resume our story. Um, caught in the uh, the time lag of due to multiple storylines going at the same time, but I'm Tom Baker in that Five Doctors episode. Where exactly, they, they couldn't have him, so he's just. You're literally kind of, every once in a while, the frame advances, and then we get a whole story. Um, it would be the same, as if, it, but if only if they switched over to that him free, being frozen, mm. that time loop, and just played it for an hour during the whole thing. Um, I, I mean, I've been making jokes, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, we return to Elzera, who is continuously kind of supervising these runs back and forth. Um, I will say at this point, you have made a, a run out to uh, Waterstone and discovered something rather strange. You had heard a bit about this and traveling by Waterstone as you had before um, when you traveled down to your cabin and then out to, to Wellstone. Um, it has been months since you've actually traveled through this town. And so it was reasonable for you to assume that like all of the other uh, places in Vatour, it had been buried in snow and was suffering for it. 
What you come to find in uh, Waterstone, however, surprises you. As you come to a very clear threshold on the road, as you recall, the road curves around the water of the lake that's there, from that comes from a natural geyser. And there's a very clearly delineated line across the road and across the lake, where you see that the snow has been stopped. The water is not frozen. And on the inside, while still suffering some of the regular, um, regular effects of winter, it does not appear as though the additional storm has set foot in this town. Small amount of snow on the ground, noticeably different cut quite literally and as you approach it you can even see a bit of the shimmer of this radiant energy not not visible uh, mostly kind of like the edge of a soap bubble which has that sort of iridescent thing only to catch it at the right angle surrounding the town and you can see on the inside they are still moving from building to building wearing only light jackets not even having to cover themselves over heavily um, and as you come to the threshold, do you pass through the sphere? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Somewhat nervously, the horses are sensing this strange shift. They've been pushed at their limits, trying to push through the snow. You've really hired more of a sledge than you have a, a, a wagon. It'd be, it would have wheels, but there would be long runners on the side that when the snow get more than a few inches deep, the runners would actually catch the, the wagon so it would float over it. And so the, the horse is a little bit confused by this. Nonetheless, perhaps it is because you're a druid and more in touch with the natural world. They seem to have come to naturally trust you. You push the wagon on through and feel only the strangest of tingling sensations as you pass from the outside to the inside, what very definitively feels like an inside. The temperature rises, still below zero, still freezing, but no longer now the, the howling wind that was outside. Even inside, you start to notice color and light and shadows dispelled as you pass into this inner area. Uh, the gnomes, or the halflings that are riding with you, are all looking around kind of wide-eyed and with some, some apprehension. Um, as you see come out to you, uh, the baker. Roland. Uh, Roland, thank you. Wow, you remember the name. I, mm -hmm. I had to go looking for the name here. Uh, I've got to bring up my section. On Roland Augustus, Waterstone. I believe. Something like that. It's been a while. But it has been quite a while since you've I, I Waterstone. literally just read my NPC list, though. <laughs> so, I'm cheating a little bit. Uh, Roland mm -hmm. Augusto Drummond. Um, who you know to be uh, Salazar's son. Uh, but has been going by the name Drummond rather than Augusto for some time. Uh, as he comes out and greets you with a warm smile and, and uh, exclaims, Ah, welcome. Uh, glad to see you once more. And what have you brought with you? Um, well, we have some food because we're kind of bringing food to places, but you guys seem to not be frozen as much as everywhere else. I'm going to guess Salazar had something to do with it. I this. think my father had something to do with it. He won't say, but he probably had something to do with it. He probably saw it coming. <sighs> Undoubtedly. At least he was... He was at the forefront when it first went up, when the shadows tried to invade. But let's go talk inside. Uh, we'll have some of your food. Uh, folks from outlying... Uh, small towns and a uh, few of the, the, the woodworkers who normally would stay the winter out have come to town. So we're a little swell for people. So the food will still be well used. Um, and we can house some of it for those who might come through again. Uh, there have been a few people over from uh, the Isk Thicket, for example, that area. Well, we do currently have food for here and for Wellstone. Oh, of so. course. We wouldn't ask no more mm -hmm. than, than are necessary. If you do have some flour over, I would be happy to to make some fresh baked bread you can take down with you. That would actually be wonderful. My and pleasure. I make the arrangement with everybody there and then go inside. Okay. Um, because we are speeding yep. things up and yep. you specifically said you yep. want to speed it up, we'll just narrate a little bit. But 
uh, you come to discover that when the surge, and you had heard a little bit about this, I believe, in, in story, as someone had talked about Waterstone, but when the first surge of winter happened, um, Salazar stood on the edge of the town and literally seemed to be just staring out at the nothingness that was threatening to engulf it. Um, and someone points out, there's numerous people there, someone points out that some time ago uh, he had been seen pacing around the town. Salazar wanders where he goes. People know this. Despite his apparent uh, uh, difficulty in seeing, he always seems to know where he's going. Um, and when he doesn't know where he's going, that was probably where he meant to go anyway. Uh, but he had been seen pacing around the town for a full two or three days earlier until finally one day he simply stopped. Um, and people, the rumors were starting to run around that he finally cracked. Other rumors that he'd cracked years ago and this was just simply another, another step <laughs> in the process. Um, but then the darkness struck. Literally wave after wave of shadow seemed to come forward and crest over an invisible bubble that apparently... He had been created. No one had seen him creating it. Um, and seemingly satisfied, as one person described it, seemingly satisfied, he sort of shrugged and went back to his home uh, that day. No one has really seen him since. Um, his son has dropped food off for him from time to time, but he rarely sees him otherwise. He's still somewhat wary of his father anyway. Um, but that, that protection seems to have held for months. Um, and people are, are somewhat amazed by this. Um, the food has been dwindling in the town. There isn't a lot of the woods itself which is captured by the bubble. They find they can move freely in and out of the bubble as they need to. So they have been able to do some hunting and been able to come back and bring some food in with them. But the hunting has gotten scarcer and scarcer as the months have been going by. Um, you suspect that that's also by that same creation that it's consuming the wildlife perhaps as well. Um, but not having to deal with the cold, not having to deal with the, the snow itself, being able to fish in part of the lake, which part of the lake is literally still open water, um, and there are still fish that have not uh, essentially hibernated or swimming in that part. In fact, they seem to be collecting in that part, making fishing even easier, uh, has kept the, the town fairly well sustained. And word has spread a little bit, so some of the other outlying towns have started to get uh, get some connection to them. Uh, not so far down as, well, as Wellstone, but uh, the sort of little scattered pockets of civilization are out there. So you get that story kind of coming to you as you as you go and take the food on through and distribute part of it to Waterstone. I do step in and say, check in with Salazar, make sure everything's good. And okay. Just, just, just a quick hello. Yeah. What's up? can't stay long. You step in the door and are first greeted with a strong sweet smell. Way too sweet, in fact. Um, and you walk in, kind of calling out Salazar's name, not hearing any response. Kind of following your nose, though, to where this sweetness is. I know where his laboratory is. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you walk into a room that does not make any sense to you. Because it makes sense. His laboratory is impeccably clean. Everything put away. Everything, everything that was bubbling and boiling, all of that stuff, stopped. All the, all the equipment taken apart, put aside, put, a, put in separate shelves. All the, sh all the books seem to be back up on their shelves. Uh, all of the uh, ingredients seem to be packed away in cases and boxes. And you see him sitting there at the other end of the table. <laughs> this table, though, does show him the sign of, of use over years. Pitted stains here and there, strange colors that make no sense. There's a hole where Zach has dropped the shelf. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's still some of that sign of it. So the table still shows the history of what had happened here. Um, but you see a, a small uh, marbled cake upon the table, uh, two slices already cut out of it, and two cups of, of tea which is probably what you were smelling. More pungent than you're used to. But you see Salazar just sitting there, sitting back in his chair, uh, fingers crossed, kind of kind of humming slightly to himself. Sit, sit, time for sitting. I don't have much time, but I'll sit for now. You have no time, but you have time now. Drink, drink. 
Now is the time for drinking. Uh, Do you I'll wish take a to bite eat? of the cake. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's some sort of lemon poppy seed cake. Very, very sweet, very light. Uh, do you take a sip of the tea? No. <laughs> I remember on <I'm> Ruin. <laughs> that was perfectly fine. Um, uh, I had hoped that I was wrong, but then again, wrongness is not something I do. Not rightness either, somewhere in between. Mm. Do you know what's going on? Yes, no, yes. Mostly. Do you know when it's going to end? I don't know if it's going to end, but when it does, you'll be certain. Mostly. That's always helpful. We're not going to drink the tea. You'll put it in a small bottle and carry it with you. It'll still be potent for days. You'll need it. Okay. And I do. I have a bunch of empty vials. Yep. I know. (laughs) Uh, And he is kind of staring off into space a little bit does take a small sip of the tea. Hmm, very sweet. Essence. Pure essence. Do you like the cake? It's good. My son made it. I figured his, his work is, is very yummy. He feels guilty now. You shouldn't feel guilty. I should feel guilty. I do feel guilty. But I'm getting over it. There's, there's no point in feeling guilty. Many points. Sharp ones. But time has already flowed over those. Time's almost done, too. That's okay, it starts again. It's like a... like an hourglass. You simply turn it over, start over again. Everything starts over again. Winter's here. I had hoped winter would come. I didn't see it. Couldn't see it. All I can do is be in the wrong place at the right time. I've been there. Will be there. Have been there. There was a road. I walked that road. I gave things when needed. Took things when I needed them. Some people needed them. I've opened doors by not being there. But I've given keys. Many keys. Keys to what? Doors. Every key opens a door. Every door opens a key. I have one left. I'll give it soon. To who? Your fiance. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Or am I behind myself? Or am I behind you? Wait, did you come here first, or did I? You were here when I got here. Hmm. That's strange. I could have sworn it started with you. Or did it end with you? Well, maybe it ended with you. Winters are long these days. Too long. And that feels long. It's okay, though. Winter will end. Summer will be here. Winter will come back again. Islands will return. I've wanted to see the water for so long now. And you can see there's tears streaming down his eyes. I didn't know if I would live long enough to see the water. I mean, I knew I would live long enough to see the water, but I didn't know. Not really. Do you have a key, Alzara? A key to what? A door. I mean, I have the key to my cabin. That's about it. Good. You have a key. Good. Do you miss him? Every day. 
Maybe you should find him every day. And give him your key. Or my key. Do you like the cake? My son made it. It's good. He is good. That's not because of me. I think he worries about you. Good. We should. I'm very worrisome to most people. They're all wrong about me. I mean, they're right, but they're wrong. Like you. You're wrong. But you know that, right? Probably. Good. You sure you're not going to drink any tea now? It's very fragrant, very sweet, very warm. What does it do? It's tea. What should it do? I've seen your teas before. Mm. Good. But you know what to expect. Just don't expect that. <laughs> Expectation ruins the future. You will need to grow the tree again. If you do not, the tree will not grow. It will be dead or never living, which is the same in reverse. The seed has already been planted by someone else, but it's not right. Where? In the ground, where seeds usually grow. How it is not their fault. They did not know. But how can I find it? Find the tree that still lives. Take its seed. It needs to live again. Something needs to live there again. It is dead. The place. The tree is brown. And green. <laughs> what did I expect? <laughs> it, was re it was red once, but only briefly, and it hurt. The shadows brought the red tree. Are you talking about the grove? Does the grove have trees? Yes. It seems like a good place to start. A tree. There was a fire on the large tree when the shadows came. Do you like the cake? Yes. My son made it. He did not make it poisonous. Someone else tried to do that. You should probably drink some of the tea. And you feel your head getting a little warm. I'll take a sip of the tea. <laughs> make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> <laughs> The 12. Okay. You uh, feel yourself start to sweat profusely. And you take the little bottle you put the tea in. And you struggle. Your fingers now starting to cramp up a little bit. And you pull the stopper out of it and take a, just a taste, just enough on your tongue. Because as it touches your tongue, you feel warmth radiate from that part out. You start to sweat even more the colors start to bleed around the room. The table seems to take on shapes that the markings did not have before as they twist like oil and water. Truth. Oh yeah, this is good tea. I mean, I'm not quite chicken on the roof, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
you feel the world go dim and gray other than the table. The table continues to twist. You hear Salazar's voice, but muffled now at a distance, as if through a through water. You can't make out what he's saying anymore. But upon the table, you see the patterns coalesce to the shape of a tree that's on fire. And you recognize it as the tree that was in the grove. Um, you see the druids gathered around it, putting out the fire as much as they can. The top level of the branches all burned. The tree itself seemed to sag somewhat. And you see someone, when the fire is out, reach into the soil near the tree. And you recognize Ferendra as picking up a seed out of the soil, brushing it off, putting it in a pocket. The next day, <laughs> on the floor, <laughs> you wake up in a soft bed. Um, somewhat alarmed at first, the room looks like an average inn's room. Nothing terribly fancy. There's a pitcher of cold water sitting beside you, and you feel yourself with a fiery thirst all of a sudden. You pour yourself a glass of water and kind of shakily drink it down. But as the water flows into you, your nerves start to return somewhat, and you can feel yourself kind of flexing your fingers instinctively, and sensation coming back to your body. Um, you're above the, the inn, above the bar, uh, and the barcape welcomes you there. You can see the other halflings are sitting around, um, welcoming you back. Um, you were brought in by Roland, who what found under his shoe a tack had stuck to the bottom of his shoe and on the tack there was a small ribbon and the ribbon had been woven with a pattern uh, see me soon sun it was woven into that pattern the ribbon looked ancient had no reason to be there no reason to be stuck on the bottom of his foot but he went to see his father who then pointed to you slumped on the table and said it was probably something she ate. <laughs> uh, the cake was dis doesn't seem to know anything about the cake itself, but um, brought you back, um, was told to put you in a room and let you sleep. And so he did, because this is something he has learned Don't about his father. <laughs> the more you question it, the more it just gets. So go with it. Yeah. Um, and while the sheets when you woke up were somewhat damp, um, you feel like whatever fever there had been has broken. And they're ready to go on, if you are. Yep. Um, there's a bit of ribbing from the halflings as they're joking that you clearly just can't handle your liquor. Try some of Salazar's tea one day. Uh, there's a bit of... of uh, Look towards the bartender. It's, we don't serve that here. <laughs> uh, he tricked me. I fell for it. Um, and you do still have a small vial, which has, if only one drop is necessary, it's probably got five or six doses there. Okay. What you, what it actually does, you're not really sure. Yep. But my dad might, might, might know more. <laughs> uh, so five doses. Salazar Yep. That sounds, seems reasonable. Call it that. I'm going to call it Salazar T3 because this is the third one that mm -hmm. we've encountered. He has a few different brews, you know. I mean, it's not chicken on the roof and it's not whatever he had. <laughs> Localized Salazar dose. <laughs> <laughs> Most of Salazar's concoctions get a lot more interesting. Um... To be fair, Liari's uh, potions also usually have some slight side effects. Um, and he did study under Salazar for a while, you do know that. Yep, I mean, I did when I, when I characterized him say Salazar light. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
He's a lot less mystical in his speech patterns, but... Yep. Um, you leave Waterstone, and it's rather shocking once you cross over that threshold again, leaving the town. And note that on the edge of this particular area, there was a shed, which ended up getting, basically was right on the boundary. And you can see on the inside where the wood is solid and fine, on the outside where it looks like it's been scratched to a million pieces and is decayed and rotten. Um, whatever had tried to get in poured its energy into whatever it could around the town. Um, but the cold returns as well, which kind of snaps you a bit more to attention. Travel back to Wellstone. Things in Wellstone seem to be all right. The cold is still flooding through the town, uh, but there's still, and you notice this a little bit last time you left, there's a sense of peace when you enter this area that is completely incongruous from your own personal feelings. But there's a sense of, this turned into a pun, and honestly, I did not mean this, so I'm, I'm cautioning <laughs> what I'm about to say, but as you near the town, there's a sense of well-being. That was not intended. I think it worked out well that way. I wish it was intended. I would have built it. I would have built it a lot bigger than that. Uh, but there's a sense of well-being as you get there, and you find the town to be. Yes, they are also hungry. Um, they've been able to salvage whatever was left over and dried in the garden, and have been able to introduce some of that. Um, the uh, Liari's been able to give some things that at least would take away some of the pangs of hunger even though he doesn't have any additional food. Um, your brother has been uh, more or less entertaining people, but it seems to keep the mood up and you get the sense that he's literally been going from house to house, making rounds every evening, keeping story, keeping people alive, keeping people happy, keeping people uh, um, in better spirits. So while they are hungry, they're not angry, they're not upset, they're not concerned. Very much the opposite we saw in Mature. People are desperate. People are, are, are living a nightmare that feels like for, in comparison. Um, and you deliver the last batch of this food. Um, unlike again in Vatour where it was a frenzy to unload the wagons here in Wellstone, it is very orderly. It is, and uh, you're very proud that your father is actually taking up a prominent position, keeping people organized. Doesn't make any sense in some ways because he himself is not organized when it comes to most things, but you feel like he's he's found a way to translate this to make it sense for him, and it's almost as though he's giving an alchemical recipe for organization, where there he's where that's where he's precise. All of his ingredients neatly labeled, all the things he has very carefully done, all the mixes he does are very carefully measured, where he might be falling, you know, his clothes might be falling off because he hasn't you know cleaned them or washed them for days or. You know, the, there might be the, the kitchen might be a wreck because he had to get this potion done. The potion is perfect and clean and, and ready, but then everything else is, is about ready to go. But it feels almost like with with uh, with scientific precision, he's he's organizing people. Okay, two over there. That one goes with that one. These things have to combine to make this. This is going to go there and steep for you know kind of that kind of direction. Yeah. Um, and he seems to be feeling better almost in, in picture perfect of health again. Um, there's still, and he does actually once in a while show off the little scar that's left from the arrow that hit him. Yeah. Um, and the the scar itself is a little bit darker and discolored, but he doesn't seem to be having any pain. Um, it doesn't seem to be affecting him. In fact, he seems to be in good mood. And he's very happy to see you when you return. Uh, as is your brother, who started to wonder a little bit and then admits that he probably didn't have to worry too much because you've always been the tougher one of the two. Yeah. Um, so, good reunion there. Back down to Rackdale again. You stay as long as you can, but at the same I, time you have to leave. I do give a little bit of Salzarp's potion if you can figure out what this is for me. Um, and your, your father is delighted to have something different to work on. Um, he says he's had a number of, of Salazar's teas from year to year. There's only a few of them he really remembers a lot clearly. Yeah. Um, how much can you spare? Um, I'll give him two doses. Okay. And he... Or, or I'll give him, him the vial and use as much as you need, but, like, if you can save some of it's useful. 
What did he tell you when he gave this to you? Anything? He told me that the cake was poison, that I should drink the tea. Okay. All right. Um, that helps. He told me that, and that it was five minutes ago, and I don't <laughs> <laughs> As a player, don't he, remember. He told you, he did say you'll yeah. need it. Yeah, and that I, I would need it. Oh, well, uh, all right. Uh, I will take two, two doses and leave you with three, just in case. Uh, and I'll see what I can understand from it. Uh, he gave no indication as to ingredients, did he? Well, I have some of the standard ones he typically uses. He may have found something a little more um, I mean, it's not chicken on the roof, which is what my friend ended up with, what Emran ended up with that one time. But I don't remember that one, but he's made a number of others. And I do explain like what it did, like mm -hmm. what I felt on my side of things when I took it. Oh, so. okay. A lot of the things that Salazar can create are difficult for other of us to reproduce. There's something about his particular passions or study uh, that most of us can't figure out. But I'll see what I can do. And I do mention, his laboratory was clean. It was what? It was clean. Oh. Like, things That's... put in where places go. Like, things put in the, where they go. That's not good. Yeah. What do you think it means? And your father looks genuinely quite disturbed by this news. I, I don't know. But I've been in his laboratory before. How bad is the road between here and Waterstone? And it's, I mean, you struggled to get down this way. You had the numerous horses to pull the wagons through. Yeah. Um, which leaves a little bit of a path through, but it's, it's rough. Yeah, it's, it's fairly rough. Maybe I will see if your brother will accompany me on a field trip. I feel like I should see him. Maybe. Well, that's my worry, not yours. You've been doing an excellent job. Your mother would be proud of you. I'm sure she'll hear of it soon enough. She hasn't already. Um, it would be nice sometimes if it was easier to get a hold of her. You get used to that, I suppose. Yeah. I could say that. I would be lying, but... <laughs> Um, good luck and uh, he kind of kisses you on the forehead gives you a, a strong hug um, and then I continue my friends <laughs> yeah so back down again to Rackdale and making the trip back up meanwhile Clark and Zakis been, it's been requested of the two of you that you find this food mm. how do you want to go about doing that I'm gonna go to Bazo. Okay. Okay. Um, both, with both of us or no? Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll go to the elegant pony to do that. Okay. You find him on his regular rounds once again. We'll go through the ritual of waiting for him to do the yep. thing. And doing uh, doing his regular regular assistance. Buy some booze. Um, have a seat somewhere. He joins you over at the table, the typical pattern. So, have you been? Good. Not too bad. You? And did you make the appropriate introductions you needed to? Sure. We've met with Alistair. He's now mostly aware of the situation. Okay, I can't even pretend I'm surprised. I heard this morning about... It was last night that you actually went to the council. Mm -hmm. Word got out about that. That was... It was meant to. Interestingly foolish, maybe. Possibly... Mr. Ben Leslie Foolish, but... Foolish like a fox. I've Foxes never eaten fox. Yeah. I don't know what it tastes like. I don't think many have. Still, what did he have to say? That part I wasn't privileged to. Uh, it's come to my attention that there are possibly stashed away food stores down in the warehouse district belonging possibly to one of our mutual friends. Mm -hmm. That's what the that manifest I had you grab indicated. Mutual friends. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought. I didn't think it was food. I didn't really think of food until recently. I mean you couldn't get food, that's when you started to think about it. Alright. So in an effort to not be implicated in um, starving out his own city 
Uh, that would good, be embarrassing. Our yes. good counselor uh, would like them food found, and uh, if some of it falls off the wagon and finds its way into the poorest hands, I'm sure no one will mind too much. Hmm. But if he could make a show of delivering food in the middle of a storm, I'm sure it would uh, improve his standing. It would indeed. Especially if the details are left to, to people who don't talk so much. Well, I can widen the circle a bit, but that is going to be more people involved and a little more falling off that wagon, perhaps. I have a hunch as to where to start looking. Hmm. We have a mutual friend. Indeed we do. I tell you what, I'm feeling generous today. I'll give you 24 hours head start. All right. Circle up. <laughs> this is a very valuable opportunity, and while I do like young Clark here, I'm still a businessman. And I still have some other people who would be interested in being employed. But I suspect that you'll be able to do the deal within 24. Well, I'm sure we can come to some sort of agreement, even if I can't. Oh, I'll still help, if that's what you're I'm not asking. looking to make a major profit out of this. It's not my... It's not oh, my cup of profit's tea. not only measured in dollars and, and coins. Sure. I've been alive this long. Indeed. Um, I'm looking for uh, something. A gift. A gift? Wow, you are the sentimental type. Not really, that's why I'm so bad at it. <laughs> what are you looking for? Um, something uh, amber or um, rare plant or maybe some shiny rocks. That's something with a with a natural shine to it. Well, my first thought was amber because it doesn't go bad. It's true lasts for a long time, can be polished well, passes for the best of jewels at some points. Sure. It's just for a druid friend. Yeah, actually. Huh, cool. What's for a view? druid, is it? Yeah. Ah, okay. That illuminates things slightly. Right. Anywho, uh, if you happen to come across such an item of a particular value um, that uh, wouldn't go missing by anybody you care about, uh, <laughs> that would be pleased uh, to be in my hands. Uh, I, I am just going to give it away, though. So, I don't think that anybody I care about would be too concerned about losing anything. Okay. Well, I'm going to go visit our mutual friend. All right. And uh, I can't say things aren't going to get a little messy. So if you have any dealings, you might want to uh, shore those up. When I started investigating him, I decided to make sure that we were somewhat insulated from any fallout. But I do appreciate the warning. If uh, if you want to supply any uh, uh, staff to assist, I'd be more than welcome. But that's up to you. Hmm. It's something to do in the, the days where everyone's staying out for the cold. Well, I I suppose I could offer some people in exchange for a bit, a bit of a, a cut of the proceeds. Sure. Fine by me. All right. Then I rescind my earlier offer. I don't give you 24 hours. I'll give you four men instead. Okay. Sounds good to me. And uh, just uh, tell next, me when and where. Next day or so? Can do. Okay. So you arrange for yeah, them just... to come in. Are you going to accompany him yeah. on his uh, sojourn? Might as well. I don't know. Do you want to come do some illegal stuff? Am I going to get caught? That is a very high possibility. Uh, when and where? Uh, I can give you 12 hours to make the decision. Um, I'm going to be going about 12 hours after that. Okay. Fuck that. Why do I have to make decisions? <laughs> you got time. Okay. Is there anything else you need from me? It's got a bit quiet. I think um, food will be the most valuable gold that can be found. Okay, well, if you get quiet people, I can make use of that. No, uh, I have a few. Okay. So, is Zacchaeus going with or not? Uh, what day is this in the calendar, really? <laughs> Uh, it, it, we're not going to be able to nail it down to a particular day, but, but basically uh, early like, in that sixth month. Okay, so like while can, I'm still... Can it be his journey. day off so he can do, uh, do that? Sure, that seems convenient. Okay, because I was like still reading books at the time, right? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. This was this is probably not going to disrupt your book reading. Okay. 
That's all I care about. Unless you get locked up in jail and can't get to the books. Yeah, true. <laughs> Let's not have that happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I so. can try to provide assistance. I really don't want to be seen, though. Sure. Yeah. You do that. Right. It's not how I work. <laughs> if you draw all the attention away from me, that'll be perfect. Sure. So, when the time is right, mm -hmm. uh, you do find that four cut purses are available to you. One of which you recognize. Yeah, probably. Uh, you recognize Fingers, the yeah. dwarf that you met in jail. I'll, uh, uh, I'll do a proper uh, uh, cant and introduction, okay. uh, as would be respected by the community. Yeah, it, they seem to respond in kind. Um, they do. Baza would have given you basically a counter word mm -hmm. uh, to say, and uh, Fingers has, has the counter word. Okay. The three others are uh, almost deliberately nondescript, uh, as if I don't want to describe them at the moment. But uh, <laughs> uh, two of them are half elves, and the other one is a human, and then okay. a dwarf. People who would fit in. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. and they've got uh, they've got uh, decent dark cloaks that are, aren't going to be out uh, out of the norm. Okay. But you do notice that they are padded in the right places, and they do have hoods that can be drawn pretty low okay. if necessary. Uh, Basically, I'd like to try to arrange a delivery uh, to the um, Findleroy Estate, move everybody inside in a wagon, and then subdue everyone long enough to, to do all the, the investigations we need to do in a very short amount of time, and then proceed with the wagon outside, and then off into the night. Okay. That's the idea. Okay. Um, you're pretty sure the estate itself does not house the... The, uh, the goods. It's not right. big enough for that. That's okay. That'll give us... Uh, we'll have an address, I'm okay. sure, we can find. You do know where his office is. Mm -hmm. um, are you doing this sneakily, or are you doing this with a deliberate smash thump to the back of the head, and it's pretty uh, clear you've if, been there? If that can be if that can be done quietly, yes. If not, we'll try to use subterfuge. Okay. I can magically peer into the entire estate. I'm assuming I can. I know where we're going if you want to give us a heads up as to what where the guards are. Sure. Which room the guards are. That's great. Okay. And I'd be happy to relay that information to our compatriots. Okay. They don't seem to be surprised by the skills. They've probably worked with the wizard before. Um, but they are appreciative because they didn't expect to be working with the wizard. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. I'd like to, to state that I don't wish Fendleroy or his family any specific harm. Um, and to leave the children alone by all, by all actions. If there's, a, if there's a choice between harming a child or, and just leaving empty-handed, leave empty-handed. Okay. Fingers answers by way of just cracking his knuckles, being ready to go. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have uh, the two of you make mm -hmm. three rolls each. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a stealth roll. There's going to be a perception roll. And there's going to be your choice of attack roll. Okay. So for you, probably a spell attack. Uh, and if you want to pick a spell that you would use for that attack, that's also fine by me as well. Yep. This is simplifying so it down to a couple of rolls so I can narrate what happens. Sure. I'm not going to swap the cards. Let's just say I'm not using Magic Missile, but I do prep uh, sleep for that. Sure. Yep. That's a great spell. Okay. okay. Go nice and stealthy. Lightning. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But the first spell I was going to do was to like cast Arcane Eye and like, maneuver it all mm -hmm. over the estate to tell everybody where the cards are. Actually, the perception roll then make an advantage. Okay. Um, the middle roll, because uh, that arcane eye does provide a pretty big advantage. Well, I'm glad I have advantage, because that's a 19 instead of a 1. Okay. And so 19 plus. 19 plus so, what are the stealth rolls? Uh, stealth roll for me uh, is 19. Okay. And from Zakas? Oh, I'm still adding up perception. <laughs> so, 21 for perception. Okay. And. Stealth. You might want to write them down as sticky, because I'm going to ask for sure. them in order. Yep. Uh, Get it. Okay, thank you. Your perception was... Uh, no, your stealth was 19. Yeah, stealth is 19. Okay. Stealth is... 11 plus. I'm pretty sure that's a zero, but... Uh, no. It'd be a 1 12. with the dex. Okay. What was the other one? It's better than 10. Stealth, perception, attack and roll. an attack roll. Uh, sleep doesn't have an attack roll. Yeah. Yeah, it would still there would yeah. there would be an attack sleep. I'll actually give you attack roll on advantage uh, because you're using sleep as well. So Fourteen instead of three. I will take that. So that's plus Arcana. Yes, or plus uh, my spell attack. attack roll. Right. Spell attack, so plus I think it's plus ten. Nine or ten. Twenty-four. 
Okay. So the sneak rolls. Uh, Twelve and nineteen. Okay. Okay. What's the next thing you want? Perception. Twenty-one. And Sixteen here. Sixteen. Okay. And that was with advantage. Yeah. Uh, one moment. Uh, that was the 17 you rolled. That was actually the first roll. The stealth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this is perception mm -hmm. to a natural 20, 28. Nice. Eight. Okay. <laughs> okay, and the attack roll? Uh, 24. And you can choose what kind of attack it is yourself. Sure. So if you want to use your dagger or use your... Yep. It's the same difference over anyway. Okay. Uh, 21... And 24. With 24. whatever weapon. Okay. <laughs> so, you uh, arrange for a delivery. Mm -hmm. um, let's say that for the the narrative sense, it's a furniture delivery. Makes sense. Because you know that he has been actually adding additional furniture, and there was mm -hmm. a chair that was damaged, mm -hmm. and a table that was damaged last time you were there. Mm -hmm. um, Funny that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in this case, you, you kind of arrange for a table. To be uh, to be delivered. You can talk to uh, Michael about that if you need. Again, Michael the carpenter. Um, and his poor uh, indebted wife. Yes. As you uh, go to the gates and present the information, mm -hmm. uh, Michael's written you out a delivery notice, which mm -hmm. looks great. Oh, uh, I'd like to pay him for that, actually. Okay. Um, he would like to be paid for that. What's the market value for a forged document? Uh, forged is. document from from a from uh, a legitimate business person um, who shouldn't know any better. Well, he. I mean, you did apply a lot of pressure last time you met yeah. him as well. Um, let's say uh, five gold. I'll give, him, I'll give him seven. That will also cover the furniture as well. It's fine. I'll give him seven. Well, the table isn't his best work, but it was one that was half done. It doesn't. Need to be. It's a good prop for this purpose. Perfect. As you remember, there was a, a gate guard mm -hmm. uh, who checks over the, the paperwork. It seems legit. It opens up the gates for you. Does it happen to be Jack or John? It's the same as before, so yes, it would be the same guy. Ah, I'll um, keep my, uh, my, my hood covered. He he probably, you know, would he recognize you? I can't remember how you approached him last time. Uh, we we face to face. You were face to face. Okay, so uh, you probably, actually, do you, do you let uh, oh. Zacchaeus talk? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cloak down. All right. Um, you kind of just present it. It, it. It's just a business transaction. You're trying to keep yourself calm. He doesn't seem to be all that interested. So it's like, sure, whatever. I do take books and papers all the time. And yeah, this is yeah. Easy. It's just a little bit different than that, but uh, yeah. Uh, you go inside the, the front gates um, and start and basically pull the wagon up to the house. Mm -hmm. uh, your assistants come out of the back of the uh, place and start spreading throughout the house as you also make your way in with the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, you find that there is an additional guard inside that was not there last time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Fingers meets him. And I'm sure they have in. a very short conversation. It's a very a very short conversation. And uh, just to say the table's not returnable anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but he's not going to be a problem with them. Uh, you see two of them uh, run upstairs, two of the half elves, uh, or the half elves run upstairs. Um, as you start rooting through that office to mm -hmm. look for the, the the books, I'll get him to help. Ah, okay. Right. Uh, your perception roll was was twenty one. Twenty one. Be using alter self while I do all of this right now. Sure. Then? Okay. Sure. So I'm like some nondescript human right now. Uh, sure. Nondescript human even. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm just kind of imagining exactly. I, I am totally a human. I just I'm a human right now. To like get back to me at the library. <laughs> just bring the hair out. Yeah, yeah. You don't see the ears. Fold the hair out. <laughs> Um, so yes, uh, a human walks into a house. Involved in a, in a rice picker accident. Oh, oh. No, I just cast off uh, myself on myself so I can just do whatever. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> uh, it can be seen through, but it's like any other illusion, but yeah. no one's really paying much attention. Um, so yeah, you start digging through and you are looking through these papers. He's got a lot of business papers, does a lot of business. Most of it's pretty old uh, records. Uh, and then you start to think, well, no, if I were doing this business, I would have this, and I would have legitimate books here, and, well, uh, there's a, there's a, seems to be an extra drawer under here. You, you actually find the extra drawer where the actual books are kept. So there's a legitimate set of books up top, mm -hmm. and then there's the actual books, and that does indeed include the record of receiving this, and you find the warehouse address uh, where it's being stored. Clark would like to take the book. 
Okay. That's going to be valuable to a friend. It can be very valuable. Yeah. Um, you hear a bit of a scuffle coming from upstairs. Okay. Um, and uh, do you go upstairs and investigate? Uh, I can move the arcane eye upstairs. Well, yeah, that's fine. Uh, arcane eye is concentration. And so is Ultra Self. Oh, I shit, I didn't realize Ultra mm-hmm. Self was. Uh, I think it is. I may be wrong. Where's my Ultra Self? Uh, I forgot to check, so it could be. Uh, oh, yeah, it is concentration. Okay. Oh, okay. shit. You're probably busy. I'll just keep stuff. my hood down when I go then instead of. Well, I'm assuming you use the Arcane Eye ahead of time to scout yeah. things out. Okay, yeah, um, so I cancel that away. Yeah, so you would be able to use the Ultra Self Flyer in there. Gotcha. Um, are you going to go investigate or send fingers if you want uh, to? Because he's still down there with you. I'll see what the news reports bring in. Okay. If any. Uh, it, you hear the sounds of kids screaming. I will go investigate. Okay. You head up there to find uh, one of the half elves is holding one of the kids back by his head, and he's doing the typical trying to swing and trying to get at him, and starting to shout. The other half elf seems to be uh, uh, favoring one ankle that the little <laughs> ankle biter probably got to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can see just behind the, the the door, another room. There's a young girl who's looking out, um, watching the whole thing. Uh, I'll quietly mention that we're done, and then I'll leave. Okay. Um, the uh, the one that's holding the boy uh, just kind of leans in a little bit and gives the boy a shove who falls backward. Mm-hmm. And then the two of them, well, one of them runs and the other one's like, damn it, he's trying to uh, hobble down. Uh, you hear him swear uh, as something crashes probably across the back of his head as a vase is dropped across the, uh, the stairwell. Um, I'll, I'll attempt to drag him out. Okay. He's, he's lumbering, but, but half, he does need a little help to get out. We'll get him out. Um, you do not see the human. You've lost track of him somewhere. I can't control that. So okay. To the wagon. All right. Away. <laughs> All right. You pull back out. Uh, the uh, the door attendant or the front gate attendant uh, has come out to see what's going on. Uh, uh, Fingers just gives him a polite shove to the gut, okay. which causes um, him to bend over double. Is that uh, Jack slash John? Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, I'm going to leave a platinum on his chest. Okay. As he's wheezing on the ground now from the impact of the punch. And, what uh, are you doing? If I have the moment, mm-hmm. I'll draw the sword out of his scabbard, mm-hmm. make a new notch, and put it back. Okay. He seems to be pretty disabled by what, p- what fingers did to him. We'll uh, the five ah. finger punch, you might say. Uh, as yes, you, you ride off into the night. Mm-hmm. Lord Fenderoy wasn't there, his wife wasn't there either. The Perfect. two kids were there. Uh, the interior guard was there, um, and uh, the front attendant. The cook wasn't there either. Okay. I remember her from before. And yes, you have acquired that book. Okay. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, I will thank Zachus for his help. No problem. And if he wants to continue helping, he can, but uh, he's not needed. Uh, we're just going to go find the food and deliver the food. If you've got things to do, you don't have to be a part of that if you don't want to be. Are you finding the food right now? Or? Very shortly, okay. before it's noticed to missing. Is it going to interfere with my book reading? <laughs> this is late in the evening. You've been reading all day. Okay. Yeah, might as well do something to break the poor posture. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, well, the intent is to take the book... Uh, deliver it to Bazo, uh, but also uh, uh, get a mind of where we're looking from the text, and uh, then head that way with a couple of wagons and Bazo's blessing. Okay. To, to do a, a jaunty raid. <laughs> um, Bazo is very impressed by the book, and he says this is going to come in handy for quite some time. There's a lot of, of hidden things around here, and I now have a catalog of them. Well, this uh, is going to be, I dare say, fun. We're going to have to help uh, our good counselor uh, maintain his position as we transition into brighter times. Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I expect you'll uh, look after his wishes and help the city grow and thrive. Oh, I have him in my mind quite mm-hmm. a bit now. All right. Mm-hmm. On that note, I'm going to go uh, take... Uh, a look around the docks and um, 
Well, it's the warehouse district, right? Yeah, the warehouse yeah. district, excuse me. And uh, we'll meet again sometime in the near future, I'm sure. Which oh, we're absolutely. Well. <laughs> yeah. um, you That's something Clark might actually say by accident. Because <laughs> he's so yeah, used to Yeah, he's docks. so used to being around the, the docks, yeah. actually, yes. Where most of the warehouse in, 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 the, in the Queen would be. Yeah. Well, the warehouse is not hard to find. Okay. Um, Jack was his name, by the way. Jack, yeah. yeah. Jack and John are weirdly interchangeable a lot of times, too. Um, the warehouse is not hard to find. Okay. With the uh, three extras that you have and Zacchaeus' help, mm -hmm. uh, the meager guards that are there, it's it's more of uh, uh, a de facto guard rather than they don't have a huge amount of built-up guarding because secrecy was one of the biggest pieces for them. We, we just have um, be happy to pay them off or, or see them off without causing undue harm, but if they put up resistance, we'll weigh them out. Um, the negotiation is going okay until Fingers decides to stop negotiating and clobbers as, the other guy. As is his prerogative. It's, you, you, you're sensing a pattern with him, and there's a reason why he's called Fingers, because that's what he thinks with. Yes, um, and that's fine. We relate. Uh, the, other, the other guard just simply says, I don't want to do it, I don't want to have any harm, throws yeah. his sword down, yeah. and uh, if you want to give him some money, you'd be happy to, but you were in the negotiation stage essentially at that point. Yes. Yeah. Um, inside the warehouse, it is uh, full of a lot of different things. Um, you actually find that there is part of the warehouse being used for lumber. Uh, very nice cuts of wood. Probably ones that are used to turn into very nice furniture. Um, and that is being used as a mask for the, uh, the actual uh, bags of grain, uh, salted meat, you find there okay. uh, a large amount of uh, root vegetables that are basically stored in, in dirt to keep them from sprouting. Uh, Clark's intent, as long as everyone's happy with it, is to remove some of the wood mm -hmm. so it can be used as fuel. So not the really nice stuff, but the stuff that, that could go missing. Yeah, there's lumber there enough, as well. Enough to show off the fact that they were hiding something. Okay. And so we'll just take the, we'll take the top off the, off, the, off the box Okay. and we'll just leave the box bare. Um, Clark's intent, if and as long as anyone doesn't have an issue, is to take uh, one full cart of food and then let them have whatever they want to, to do their thing with. Okay. And that cart will be delivered to uh, a warehouse at the edge of the city uh, where the soup kitchen is. Okay. Uh, with, uh, Are you sending them with a cartload no, of food or taking no. yourself? Uh, he's taking himself. He's going to take one cart to the warehouse where uh, Flint Utgart has been seen. Uh, everything else is with them. They okay. can do with it as they wish. Okay. Uh, but it, they're under Basel's control. They so are. I'm sure they they'll, are. they'll act in his, act, yep. in his, in his uh, best interest. Yeah. All right. Uh, once the cart is loaded, you, you head on over. The soup kitchen is... Uh, it's a little bit late, so they're basically done for the day. They're just cleaning up inside. Um, you see uh, Flint talking with folks there, and you actually see him hand over a bag of probably what he earned from the evening, mm -hmm. from his earlier evening as well, tips. I'll point to Zacchaeus. Do you know him? It's Flint Untgart, the dwarven uh, bard you met oh, right. down yes. underneath the ground. Right. Yes, he was the, the uh, he was He was the prisoner, yeah, down there. Yes. I, I believe he's a friend of the city. You should deliver this cart to him. Will do. And Clark will hang back. Okay. Uh, you find Flint inside and in good spirits, a little, looking a little thin and haggard, but um, when you, I'm assuming you're just telling him about the cart and yeah. say, hey, I've got a cart full of food for you. Mm -hmm. Where do you say it comes from? We found it. Make a deception check. Oh, we did find it. Clark, <laughs> Clark smiles from an alley. <laughs> hey, 17. he's learning. Okay. Aww. <laughs> Flint just sort of uh, winks at you. I'll wait back. Good, good enough for me. <laughs> Um, and they come out to find this this gift of food, and the uh, the cooks that are there, and the cooks and, and the cleaners, are quickly put to work bringing it inside and setting it up in the kitchen. And you can see this from basically across the street. Is this the day Elder is working there? Uh, not quite. Not Darn. quite. It would have been interesting. <laughs> that would have been yeah. convenient. <laughs> yeah. I can I can never do convenient. Um, yeah, you see with satisfaction the food being delivered in there. Perfect. Uh, when uh, Clark sees Zacchaeus again, he will ask uh, the, uh, that cart end up at the elegant pony mm -hmm. at some point. Okay. Um, and that it's just left there. All right, I'll do that. And 
if you want, I'm done for the night. What about you? Yep. Might read another chapter in that book, but that's for later. Sounds good. Uh, I'll speak with you in a day or two. All right. Talk to you soon. And Clark will into the night. Okay. Uh, it's the next day, and you'll find out about it even if you don't find out about that day. Uh, there is an announcement in the town square uh, that a caravan managed to make it through uh, coming up from the north bridge through Farhaven and then down that arrived late into the night. Mm. Uh, and they've managed to uh, store all of it. Uh, Corin Woodcomb was the one who received the wagon. It was a long shot that he had somehow arranged for some, some weeks ago and completely forgotten about. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alistair is there with uh, uh, his brother to announce to the, the town square and then they brought forth several of the other, uh, uh, basically the, the business owners are there to help distribute the food properly. Clark will um, be there in the audience to clap. But it is it is definitely set up as a as a public affair, uh, and they had sent runners out to let everybody know this has come in. It is a sizable amount of food. Um, there are some questions in the crowd as they as or questions when they see it. It's like how did that arrive? And no one no one remarked upon it. And how is this such a big caravan that came down that road from Farhaven? The lies a little thin. But the fact that the, the road from the south had only just been out open, the fact that the, the Rockdale people had, had uh, or not the Rockdale, the, the Pabwich Glens people had been sending in food, he kind of had to divert it from somewhere else. It's a reasonable enough snor story as, no one, as long as no one looks, out, looks into it too closely. And it does seem like people are more intent on just getting the food and distributing it. But Alistair definitely uses that as a moment to shine uh, and also involves his brother to, to give him a bit of the credit as well. For having taken this long shot that he that he uh, that he sent out people months ago, um, life settles into a routine for the next couple of weeks. Um, Hi, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> I'm Rune. Back on the road after your encounter in Aquain, taking the time to deliver all this food back up to Vatour. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we get whatever we can together. Uh, if there's any other things we can get from the market, we make sure that the whole thing's full. Um, Sarah Alida was coming with us, and she was possibly bringing other people. They she wanted to go to later. the temple, but not necessarily all the way to the tour. Okay, I can pick her up later. Then. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, then we just uh, head up through the cold, along with the mysterious Catherine. Uh, and yes, arrive back in Vator, or Vator, um, probably stop in Rackdale on the way through and say hi to Felicia, Zora, uh, Zora says hi. Okay. Um, as you travel back up through Bendra, already you're sensing a shift in the cold. Um, even, good. even with the protection you've received from Catherine, um, you're noticing that the land is starting to seem a little less frosty and crystallized on the outside of this protection. Um, there's nobody, and this surprises you a little bit, there's nobody at the Oasis except for the people that are there almost semi-permanently. All of the traders have now moved on. You get the sense that they've sensed the, the change in the weather. The fact that the Benjamin Bridge or the, mm. the uh, Bargeport Bridge is now open means that they are definitely going to get some, some work. Yeah. Um, and so they are, there's no caravan staying there at the moment. Um, I'm assuming you want to pick up a little bit at the Oasis yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, the fresh fruit is always welcome. Yeah, we'd pick up uh, uh, fresh fruit, oranges, anything with a lot of, of uh, healthy qualities to it. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's reasonably, uh, uh, reasonably fresh almost all the time. The fruit seems yeah. to refresh itself fairly, fr fairly regularly there. Uh, you head back, back through, and you see the Bargeport Bridge, and you've seen they've actually widened the gap that you put in it before. Um, and they've been continually kind of picking away at it the last couple yeah. of weeks as well. Um, the snow seems to be melting a little bit. In fact, you can see little little rivers of, of water flowing off the sides of the Bar Porch Porch Bridge now. Yeah. So you're again seeing more evidence that spring might actually come. Traveling up towards the uh, towards Vatour. Make a sleight of hand roll. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just rip the bandage off. It's much easier that way. No, it really just it was stuck. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, well, that's on camera. <laughs> you, uh, you approach the city of Vatour, a city you haven't seen for a couple of weeks. 
Um, the snows here still seem to be piled up heavy along the walls, mm -hmm. but there is something different, and it takes you a little while to realize it. Uh, Emma is actually the first to kind of instinctively re realize. Um, and she says in her quiet, small voice, there's something wrong. And now you can see coming from you the... Mean uh, Ella? Ella, sorry, thank you. Uh, Two very from, different people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a lot of people in my world. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had a chance to read all the names again. I have too many names. Not too many names, I love it all. Um, but coming from both the west and coming down from the side of the mountain, there seems to be two large masses of dark shadow, like large living clouds that are just descending quickly upon the town. Huh. At this point, light is now starting to be extinguished as you realize that this, the sides of these clouds have now extended partially over where your head is. Mm -hmm. It is getting to be the end of the day, so the sun is going down. But as it extends further, it gets darker than the night. It feels as though the, the shadow is alive and living. Uh, it feels colder now, too, as if not... Not from cold, but from the absence of life. And mm. you can see these shapes start to take form towards the city and start to roll up over the walls. Okay. In, inside the city, the routine has gotten pretty good. You've delivered another load of food. Uh, they're starting to run a little bit low, actually, because uh, they've been delivering very rapidly their early crop. There is another crop to be coming as you've been able to increase the, the output they've been able to do down there. Um, you've been making your way around the city. Uh, Bazo found you something quite nice. Okay. Uh, it's dwarven made. Okay. Probably a couple of hundred years old. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, an amber tree. Hmm. Inti uh, in intricately carved. Uh, it only stands about a foot and a half tall. But in, in this amber has been the delicate uh, shapes of, uh, of leaves. And as you look at the amber the right way, you also realize the amber itself has solidified around what looks like a large nut. Hmm. Uh, and it, it fits kind of the description you want. Perfect. Uh, and, he says, and he actually presents it to you. And he says, that is courtesy of our mutual friend. Perfect. Um, Much appreciated. He delivers that to you, and then someone runs inside the elegant pony. Uh, and you can see this look of wild fright in their eyes. It, it's The night is alive. There are things. And you can see now that he's been sweating, and there's, a bit of, there's two trickles of blood and some sort of scar across his face. Um, it's coming. All hell has broken loose inside the library you're studying that evening and um, a cold breeze blows in through your window shut the window and hmm. you see you, you see that Vrindlik is standing in your window problem solved looking out on the horizon that's not good what, what's going on I don't know but I think it's coming for us what, what's coming for us I'll go to the window. And you can see the, the, the shadows, the, the clouds. And out of the cloud, you see shapes forming and dissipating, uh, looking like large tentacles or large claws, or um, uh, what looks like the, a jaw of a gigantic creature kind of forming and then misting away, and how far surging out over the edges of the walls of the city. Uh, and uh, you can see a little bit of it starting to seep through the front gates as well. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, Vrindwick bounds over to your bed and with a spring jumps into the, the vent system. And you hear clunk, clunk, clunk. And it kind of vanishes in there. You I'll hear, grab the books, the, the one under the mattress and the one on the rafters to make sure like I can take them with me. <laughs> okay, well, not tethered by anything. So yeah. um, you feel a little squirming in the inter interior pocket as Prina, once again, yawning. Uh, kind of says, "What's going on? What There's was that slamming?" Shadows coming. Did you slam the window? Yes. It was really loud. Shadows. Yeah. Would you like to have a peek? Uh, and she kind of leaps out of you, out of your uh, pocket, dives a little bit, and with one flourishing motion, pulls out her tiny little sword. Let me at him! Creep open the curtains. It's like look. She flies over to the cur or flies, closes over the window, kind of sits on the on the sill. Oh crap! I know. Um, I'll go. 
let Adrian know. Okay. Um, you're talking with Ferendra. Um, she's uh, been talking about how um, things are running a little sparse, but everything coming up from uh, the, from the glens has been a lifesaver. Um, there's something I'd like to show you. I, Alexia was talking about it. Madame Ferendra, I should probably say. I shouldn't be so personal, but... It's fine. I miss her. I hope she's okay. Um, the snows will fall soon, right? Uh, anyway, she told me about this place. There's an estate in the city. Yeah. Um, it's kind of old and abandoned now, but apparently the estate was built over uh, an old grove. Oh. There used to be a grove here. Not a big one. It couldn't be because it's a city, but there's a grove here. We should... I don't know. She said she would let me replant it. Interesting. I know. Is that why you took a seed from the tree? Uh, uh, what? And she kind of blanches. W what do you mean? I had a vision. Don't ask why. It's a long story. Weird wizard with his potions. What? Just, if you're ever in Waterstone, just avoid Salazar. <laughs> I'll make a note of it. Um, but you. But I saw you take a. I was told that I needed to replant, find the tree, take its seed. It needs to live again. This place is literally what he said. Oh. Uh, and then I had a vision of you taking the seed. Oh. Um. Well, I wasn't supposed to. I figured it was. I mean, the tree is old, and, and I was afraid it was never going to come back to life. It's been growing since. Yeah. But I, I planted that before the winter, before the snows fell. Show me. Well, it's it's not here. I, I, I just found a place out in the woods to the west, a place called the Isk Thicket. It looked like it needed happiness again. Isk thicket? Yes. Isk is Y-S-K. Y-S-K. Let's not turn a vapor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I... I... Did I do something wrong? I don't know. All I know is that I was told that it needs to be replanted. And that something was wrong with its planting. And you hear the screech of the hippogriff uh, in its nest that's been built basically on one side of Alexia's... Uh, glamour quill. Glamour quill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on one side of, of Alexia's estate, basically, where they do have animals. They've actually, on the second floor above the stables, have built a nest for the hippogriff. Uh, glamour quill. i got to get used to saying that. <laughs> uh, and you hear it screeching uh, with alarm. And... Uh, Ferendra runs out, I'm presuming you follow. Yeah. Um, and you can see clearly what it's screeching at as this dark cloud is now engulfing over the city. And you can see coming out of the cloud and kind of coming out and coming back in, the shapes would look like not birds. They look more snake-like with wings um, that kind of form and disappear from time to time um, way up above. And you start to hear this keening sound, sound of a, of a woman's wail. But it's not sadness, it's not despair, it's anger that comes out of this wail. And it starts to echo around the city. You see the, the, the shadow starting to press down in the city. You spur your horses to get on going faster. Are the gates open? Uh, the gates are wide open. Okay, how far am I from the city? Um, you're within like 10, 15 minutes of getting there at full gallop. Oh, okay. That's going to take a while then. Okay. Yeah, we'll uh, move faster. Okay. Spur the horses on faster. I'll cast an enhanced strength on the uh, horses so they can okay. plow through any snow um, that's in a way. The, the path that you created before seems to have been maintained. You, know, you get the sense that more, more wagons have traveled up and down this route. Uh, and it, uh, uh, the horses dig in and start pushing faster. You see that the shadows overwhelming the walls have also started to pour in around the gates as well. 
You do not see guards at the gates. You do not see guards at the guard posts up above either. Um, and you pe- press okay, forward okay. In, inward. How how close do you want to be before you're going to do something? Uh, well, spells have like a hundred foot or less range generally, so they okay. have to be fairly close. So you start to approach the gates. Mm-hmm. The gates are about is it feet dark away. around us? It is darkening, yes. Uh, the sky is now almost completely blotted, blotted okay. out where you are. Uh, well, we're charging through the gates before I cast anything further. Okay. You see now wisps and shadows of this uh, of this uh, cloud kind of pressing down upon the city. It was a cloud at one point. Now it seems to be descending further and further. The tops of the, of the highest buildings now are engulfed entirely in shadow. Um, you see uh, people uh, running in the streets, uh, some of them being chased by what looks to be large uh, panther-like creatures, but they have strange tentacles flowing out of their backs. Um, you mm. see uh, horses half made out of shadow with uh, large armed warriors running down people in the streets. Well, I'll triple my uh, voice output and uh, yell, uh, Head to the town square! Follow me! Okay. That's also for all the cards behind me. (laughs) Okay. Um, As you start charging on through, um, you see uh, people kind of looking, look over and you see a person pulled into a shadowy alley, just as though they were reached out by a shadow hand and pulled into it. Others are falling in line with the with the wagons that seem to be generating some mm. some momentum. As I'm going, I will... Oh, actually, no, that takes my action. Never mind. Okay. I was going to cast, like, radiant bolts at things as we went past, but then I can't control the wagon as an action. Okay. So I uh, you start to ride into the town, and you see the, the, the clouds overhead start to twist and turn. You notice this as well, and you looking out the window where this fellow has come from also notice there is a coalescing that's happening. And um, Rinwick pops out of the, the um, uh, vents once more. you got to see this. And he kind of go, pops down off your bed. Heads out your door and come on. He urges I'll you to follow. With all the books um, again. <laughs> he goes across the hallway, uh, opens up the first door he comes to. Uh, it happens to be uh, one of uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Hel- uh, Helga. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Helga, yeah, one of the other assistants who's there, and she's just staring agape at the window as you run across, and you see as the swirling clouds overhead seem to be coming to a funnel point above the library, and that's where I'm going to end for the next oh. couple of weeks. We get you all back in one place. I knew we weren't going to finish the downtime. Hey, we finished downtime. We're here now. You're all in one place. Everything no. else now can happen in in uh, in, uh, in scenes. Okay, I can. Uh, we can go through this afterwards, but that isn't that. That's. I like, know you have more to do. Yes, and there's still more more uh, well, stuff to happen. But at least you're all in one place for a l- brief period of time. Yeah, like there's still a couple of there's like three weeks left. Yeah. But getting you all in one place was the, the timing I wanted to get to, to happen to make it coalesce. This is like at the end of the six months, right? Nope. No, not even sadly. It's in the middle of the sixth month. Okay. But, uh, but at least I've achieved that much. And we can see how many of you survived to finish out the rest of downtime. Right, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, uh, that's where we'll call it to a close for this evening. Thank you very much for playing, guys. Uh, this has been a weird... Eight episode. <laughs> We're on nine currently. We're going to be ten next time. Uh, ah. Yeah. Um, thanks for kind of bearing with it <laughs> as we uh, try to try to coalesce everything. Uh, I've learned a lot of what not to do out of this particular process. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hinted for those of you who are watching this that there's going to be a bit of delay. Uh, it looks like at least two weeks uh, where I'm going to be unavailable, uh, and then possibly another week where we have. Uh, Clark possibly unavailable. I may or may not. Uh, I want to say that um, for those who hadn't, actually probably nobody would have seen uh, back when you, can you just hold off on that for just right. one second, please? <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of noise. Um, we, uh, we're going to have potentially a guest player, returning player, one of the original players uh, coming back in June. Adam will be joining us. I do not know yet anything about how that's going to happen. But uh, honestly, if you brought back uh, the character he brought back for the Christmas one, uh, Thunk, it wasn't really Christmas. Shank. It was the, uh, sorry, Thunk was the island, right. Uh, <laughs> that was for the Festin celebration. Uh, he had the one shot. 
where he Skyped in from uh, from China, Taiwan. but he's actually... Hmm? Taiwan. I'm not going to get any details. Right? <laughs> but we'll see. Um, so we may have five players next time, or, or we may have someone mm -hmm. substituting in um, for Jody. Then we'll be back, I think, on a regular schedule until mid-July and so forth. If you do enjoy this, Jody, what should they do? Tune in next time. And you click the like button and, or and whatever. Like and and <laughs> click the like, comment <laughs> below, and uh, make sure to ring the bell so you can get notifications for our next adventure. So After we'll, you subscribe. We'll be up on YouTube. <laughs> the video will be up on YouTube. And given the trouble we've had with streaming to Twitch, I suspect streaming to YouTube is going to be our next our next attempt. So we'll see. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, whew, six months to do six months. Mm -hmm. I did not expect that to happen. I have to find my cursor so I can press the button. Ah, <laughs> uh, where's my button? If only this was a touch screen, I could do it for if, you. If only that was that was visible to me. This is the most awkward ending ever. <laughs> just, just, just for fun. Just, 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 just for fun, we, we could just, you know, fade to black, but I'll fade to this one instead. Bye! <laughs>